Hello, and welcome to Kolak, America's heart. Life is generally easy in Kolak. The spirit of our small town is built around enjoying life, despite our technological empire. Kolak is like Paris. Art, music, and treasures of life are not just incidental. They are central to the spirit of our little town. This is a special gift for visitors and those who live in our vast green valley. Kolak's natural beauty can be thanked to the peaks that tower over us in our four corners, shielding us from the elements. Spend the day at Crater Lake, fed by the ever-flowing Riley River. America's heart. Enjoy our historic Main Street, or take a tour of our world-famous Shepherd's Winery, my favorite. Golak prides itself in being a world leader in renewable energy and advanced medicine, all thanks to our most famous attraction, Synchroneity Tech. Many new families find their home in Kola, brought in to fill one of the country's most exciting genetic research facilities, many open roles. <laughs> Science is at the very soul of Kola, unlike anywhere else in the world. Gated by nature itself. The year is 1991, because it is. Because that is when this collective moment takes place. The last era of isolation from information. The place is Kolok, Washington, residing in the famous Stone Valley. A place majestically nestled between mountains with an elevation of 3,500 feet that sees no annual snowfall and very little precipitation outside of the daily thick fog that envelops the sunrise. We open on a young woman perched in a pristine apartment overlooking the valley. She sits, wait, no, she's rising, stands, and walks across the spotless tile floor, her bare feet squeaking on impact with near a particle of dust between her skin and the laminate. She stops at the floor-to-ceiling window. Facing north, she sees herself. She raises her hand. She, too, raises her hand. She looks at herself longingly. There's a brief pause. A deep sadness waits the both of them. She nods, and then turns to address us. We know that it's time for us to leave. This is not her story, not today. It's Rachel's. Bursting out of the front door of a modest greenhouse with white picket fence is Rachel Jewell. A young Asian woman of 17, she's wearing ripped, tight jeans with a green jacket tied around her waist, large hoop earrings, and a handmade graphic tee featuring Maggie Shung's face. She's been out from school since last Monday, supposedly for being extremely ill. Her face lights up at the sight of her friend Sky, 17-year-old junior waiting patiently at the curb and her red 1988 Jeep Wrangler. It's Monday, March 4th. Rachel buckles up. Hey, Nine, I... I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. Uh, it's okay. Uh, right off the bat, I I'm so, so sorry. I didn't call you over the weekend. I just wanted to rest. Are you okay? Like... This is very unlike you. You've been sick, I guess? I asked your brother. Uh... I, I feel better. And, and no, I didn't call Marcus, either. I didn't ask about him. Um, I, I'm just glad you're better. Uh, I've missed you. It's been, like, lonely without you. School's not the same when you're not around. I missed you, too. It's... It was... 
lonely, bored, tired of dealing with my brother. <laughs> um, He's the worst. Uh, yeah. Hey, do you think before we head to school you can make a stop for me? Uh, yeah. Just, ever since I lost my car, I just... Do you mind? Where? Um, you know that housing complex just next to the police station? Yeah. I gotta pick something up. Okay. Wow, you're being very mysterious. I just... Hey, you don't need to say anything. I like a good adventure. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go. All right. Sky and Rachel make their way towards the south side of town, crossing the river, the Riley River, mind you, working their way towards the police station. She seems a little nervous. Uh, she's pre-prepared a couple hundred dollar bills in her hand, much to your surprise. Uh, Rachel, that's a lot of money. Uh, I didn't... Okay, don't be mad. Um, I should probably tell you... Just... Don't... Don't get upset. I know... Okay, look, we're here. Rachel, I just... you're my best friend. You should be able to, like, to tell me anything. And vice versa. We should hey, have secrets. I'll... Okay, I I'll be right back. No, you... What? Rachel exits the car as she moves directly towards this old run-down house with an old beaten-up couch on the front porch. She nervously knocks on the front door, looking back at you, trying to assure you that everything's okay. You see an older man open the door. He's nervously looking around the neighborhood as well. She points towards you, and this implication seems to frighten you a little bit as you duck down inside your car to make sure that whoever this person is doesn't necessarily see you. It appears she's only reassuring this individual that you're cool. Everything's fine. You see her put something in her pocket as she exchanges the money with the man and heads back towards the Jeep Wrangler, quickly getting in the car and buckling herself up. All right, let's go. Uh, okay. What I, was that? I... Was it drugs? Yes, but don't, don't be mad. I'm not... I... I wouldn't do this if I thought there was any way this could come back on you and get you in trouble. No, I'm an accomplice now. This is great. When are we doing the drugs? I mean... I've been smoking weed for a while now. Yes. Uh, is it weed? Yeah. You didn't tell me. A lot. Uh, look, okay, there's something else I want to tell you too. Oh god, you're not pregnant, are you? I can't take that. No, I'm not- I will kill him! No, the- Okay, well, back it up. The two of you, as you're talking, start making your way towards the high school, back towards the north side of town. Okay, just back it up a little bit. I kind of need the weed to relax because I think I'm going to ask Marcus if he wants to do it tonight. Oh, your first time. Yeah. That's a, that's a big deal. I totally get it. That's... Wait. Whoa. So you guys are pretty serious. Yeah. Um, I figure it's now or never. I mean... What do you mean, now or never? You have plenty of time. Are you sure you feel like... He's not pressuring you, is he? No. No, if anything, I'm pressuring him. Oh. I keep hinting at it, and he doesn't seem to pick up on it. Oh, he's kind of a nerd. Maybe you have to, like, say it in a video game way or something. I don't know. How do you say something in a video game way? I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> um. Okay. Anyways, uh... Wow. Okay, well, yeah, so, totally. If you need all the weed for yourself, you just... That's, that's on you. Yeah, um... Just... I mean, maybe tonight when I get off work, we'll... I'll, I'll call you after. Yeah, that'd be and great. Smoke whatever's left. I mean, sure, yeah. I, I just want to spend time with you. I feel like I, I never get to see you. Um, we yeah. just started hanging out again, and I don't want to do anything to mess that up. I just, like I said, I support what you do, and if you want to have sex with Marcus, great. Uh, you want to smoke with me later? 
that's cool too. Uh, I just miss you, Rachel. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll miss you too. While making their way towards Kolok High, rounding the curve towards the assisted living center, walked a man in the middle of the road wearing a long black raincoat and a black backpack on his back. He doesn't turn to look at Sky's Jeep. As Sky swerves to miss him, requiring a flight check with a difficulty of six. Oh, flight. Oh my god, Sky, look out! Ah! It's a nine. Sky very easily drives out of the way. Why don't you go ahead and tell me uh, how you maneuver out of this situation? Um. <clears throat> Pull my e-brake, do a little Tokyo drift, and just uh, swerve past the dude. And as I'm going past him, I like pull my sunglasses off in slow mo and look at him with a disgusted face, like freaking idiot. Yes, you are driving a 1988 Jeep Wrangler. I'm gonna ask that you roll a brains now with a difficulty of 12 to make sure that this Jeep does not roll as you e-brake going <laughs> sideways. Uh, well, what was the dice again? Your brains. Okay. Well. You know, She's I tried to for be them. a little bit creative, so I guess I'll never do that again. Be advised your success on that was only a success of three. Not necessarily Tokyo Drift level. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Set. What is that? That's a one. Oh, that's a strong one. Maybe I just do this <laughs> in my mind. Strong one. Can I do, still do the slow-mo thing with my glasses? That's all I really want. So maybe I just do look a little, I just go like this. You have two tokens available oh given to you by the fellow passengers <laughs> in the car. Now, given that, that is a difference of 11. I will advise you that in the rule book, a difference of 10 and above can result in death. Would you like to use those two tokens to reduce your failure level? Got it. I'm already Tokyo drifting to my death. Is that what you just told me? I'm saying if you don't use those tokens, you will die in the first ten minutes of this show. <laughs> Damn it. I'd like to use those tokens. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Good to still have you Reminder, around. Reminder, successes and failures happen on a curve. The further you are away from the result, the more serious the impact. Ten and above can result in character death. You quickly pull the e-brake, trying to act cool for your friend, as your two wheels come up off the ground and your hub blows off of your tire as the back right side of your car skids down the side of the road, sparks flying out in all directions. A small flame erupts on the side of the road from the friction from the impact of this tire exploding. You're fine. As appears to be Rachel. What the fuck was that? What the hell's wrong with you? You know what? I think I just had too much sugar this morning for breakfast, and I thought I saw that oh in a movie once. God. I thought it might be cool. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, your car is... There's a fire. Um, uh, Rachel, I know that. Can you just leave? Can uh, you just leave? No, I got this. I, it's under control. I, I just bought $200 worth of weed. I don't even... It's like a lot. Oh, my gosh. My car is basically like a, a giant joint. <laughs> It's gonna why are you? Why do you? Okay, you Everywhere. really weird me out sometimes. You can just go now, please. Okay, I'm going to. As Rachel says, whatever it is she's about to do, she looks up um, after looking down at the carnage to realize that there is no man behind you. As she looks over her shoulder, she looks at you, and then you follow the direction of her face once again, realizing that there is no one there, but. The confirmation that you just received from Rachel ensures you that there was. What the hell? Okay. So they won't believe there was someone in the... I'm, I'm going to walk to school. We're really close. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. I can fix this. I got a spare tire. It's totally cool. But my car is on fire. I'm just going to call my dad. Don't even worry about it. Get to class. Uh, this is stupid of me anyways. Dang it. I mean, it was almost really cool. It was almost really cool. It's oh. it's the thought that counts, you know. Sometimes the, I do it's stuff. Definitely the thought. Don't tell anyone, will you? I, I got this like reputation to keep. 
Oh, okay. Well, Maybe I mean, this something... is one of the only roads into school. I'm sure all the buses are about to come by. Yeah, you're right. Uh. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then I, I want to like, what get, if, I'm gonna get out of my car. What if we lie? What if I, what if we say I got an accident or something crazy? Well, you got an accident. That's what it, I mean. That's. But like I, an intentional one. I mean, wait. No. No. Oh God. Wait. Tell me. What are you, what are you thinking? Okay, a deer. Yes. I and... love the deer. It makes, you know, it obviously makes you the hero in this situation because you didn't want to kill the deer. A I deer. love so deer. So we put our lives at risk yes. to swerve to miss the deer. You know how much I love deers. Exactly. Wait, quick, Rachel, punch me. I want to get a bloody nose. What? Why? Just do it. <laughs> I would like you to roll your brains, difficulty of six. <laughs> this is actually, no, this is the fight roll. I will let you know that combat in this game is also extremely serious and can have serious repercussions. <laughs> The greater the difference in your result. I so okay. That explodes. It's expl. It's That's an exploding expl die. You get to roll it again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you get to roll it again. A uh, six. So that's a total of twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. That's plus, a deep uh, you oh, get a plus, plus one, one every time, so that's a thirty-one. <clears throat> Wait, no, no, it was brains, right? No, it was your fight. D12 plus one. Got it. Even, it, we'll keep it. You rolled okay. the wrong die, but you exploded Sorry, and brains. you are more than highly <laughs> above that result. I just Rachel, want a little bloody nose. Rachel, just give me a little bit of blood. Rears back as hard as she can. Rachel, please, just be cool about this. We gotta make it look real. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> As she swings that punch at you, as the fist impacts the front of your face, you feel nothing. It's as if the shock of the moment and the adrenaline from the near car accident wears off of you as you spit blood onto the ground. You feel a slight numbness in your nose as you take your hand up to your face, readjust, and put your nose back into position, smiling with blood between your teeth. This... You got this? Is awesome. Wait, I'm gonna put some dirt on my face too, just in case. Uh, to make it look like, I don't know, dirt flu or something. I think it's the blood's pretty enough? believable as it is. Okay, you're right, you're right. Okay, quick. In this moment, the police arrive. Uh, hello officers. Uh, a deer came out of nowhere. And I swerved to not hit it, <laughs> and I busted my face on my steering wheel. I'm so sorry. My car is on fire. Can you help us? Is anyone hurt? I mean, just me a little bit. You know, I'm a little banged up. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, do, do you need an ambulance? Nah, I'm too cool for that. I mean, I'm fine. Sorry. I'm fine. Okay. Um. Just do you have well, like a? I just need help getting my car uh, up and going so I can get back to school. Yeah, we'll help you get that. Spare put on real quick. Sweet. Uh, you know, let me let me let me grab the fire extinguisher first, and we'll take care yeah. of this. It's a good idea. Out here, are you sure you're okay? You're bleeding a lot. Yeah, I'm okay. It's just, just a, a flesh wound. Hit your face on the steering wheel. Yeah, I mean the deer was right there. It like jumped across, and I was like, no. You gotta man. watch out for him. We tell you all the time. You I gotta know. be careful out here. When I when I was driving, I heard you guys' voice in my head. I was like, watch out for the deer. It's too late though. You know, do what you can. I really appreciate you hearing our voice in your head as you're thinking about. What the right thing to do is. That's... Always, officer. All right, so, uh, you know. Now, uh, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to put you in the car unless there's some sort of law that's being broken. So, yeah. uh, you, we can call your dad. No problem. Uh, mm. we'll, we'll take care of this for you. I know you all got to get to school. School's yeah. about to start here real quick. So, just go ahead and take a walk up the road. We'll call your dad, take care of this situation. Don't worry about it, Sky. Uh, sweet. That would be awesome. Thanks so much. No problem. Oh my god, I feel like I didn't even have to punch you in the face. I love that you punched me in the face. Do I got blood on my shirt? A lot. Oh my god, this is gonna be so epic. I, I mean, I can't wait till we get to school. This is gonna be so, so sick. Rachel and Skye continue walking their way towards school. As the buses go by, kids leaning out the side, staring in awe after seeing the vehicle and the small fire and police, and now these two young women, one of which heavily covered in blood, making their way towards Kolok High. Shit happens. I think they're people are looking, right? You see people looking? 
Rachel. Yeah, they're definitely looking. All right, stick to the story, okay? Just let it get bigger. Don't deny anything. Okay, all right. Just let it be. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I was going to have you give me a ride after school. My dad will probably drop the Jeep off in the parking lot if it's fixed. Okay. Well, okay, if, if, if the tire's fixed and you're, everything's cool, do you think you could give me a ride to Deer Crossing and then work after? I want to sure. see if I can score some tacos from Marcus before putting in a six-hour shift and then Ooh. scoring again. <laughs> yeah, double score. Wait. But, like, pick me up at Baker's house. Got I got to tutor the coma boy again. Oh, again? I mean, it's two to three times a week, but it, it's no big deal. Just pick me up at five. If everything's cool. I I don't want to be a bother. No, you're never a bother. Just see if you can score me some extra tacos, too. That would be rad. Yeah, I don't think they care. Okay, great. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Sky and Rachel walk into the Kolok High parking lot. Kolok High. The Phoenixes. A large public school on the north side of town. Very large, considering its rather small student body. Many families that migrate to Kolok for work are typically without children or choose to use Synchronity's company schooling options with accredited private tutors. More on that later. Rachel sees Marcus across the way, 18-year-old senior, and young love is not one to be missed. So let's check in on that moment. Come on, Sky, Marcus! Ugh. Rachel runs across the lot to jump into Marcus's arms. Much to Marcus's surprise, Sky not too far back in tow. Oh my gosh, how, how have you been? One. Hey. Uh, God, I'm. What? So sorry. I don't know why I said that. Uh, I. Sorry, I didn't call you. Um, I got your messages. I just. I wanted to heal up. But it's been seven days. I just, I was worried. I mean, usually you hear from your girlfriend over a week. Oh my God. Look at Sky's face. What's her deal? I'm right here. I can hear you. You could just address me. You could talk to me. I'm right next to her. Is there a reason? What's oh, her I'm deal? I'm sorry, milady. What happened to you? Uh, probably the same thing that's going to happen to you if you don't just change okay, your tone. Okay, okay. Oh, wow, 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 uh, wow. She got in a fight with some homeless dude kicked his ass. That's right. You should see his face and his shirt. Also, we wrecked her Jeep on the way here. It's been a crazy morning, Marcus. So Are I'd appreciate if you just chill. God. Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. I punched her in the face. It's freaking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're not supposed to say anything. Uh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. All the kids on the bus saw me come out. Everyone's going to say something crazy happened. Yeah. Don't say anything. I don't know why Seriously. she had me punch her really weird. Marcus, you say anything, I'm gonna kill you in your sleep. I'm not gonna Tonight. say anything. Hey, uh, Sky, Sky, can um, hey, can you meet me after gym? I, uh, I wanted to talk to you about something. Sure, I mean, is it something major? Like, you know, no, no, it's fine. We'll just, we'll, we'll talk about it after gym. Okay. You're not gonna punch me in the uh, face, are you? No, but if anyone asks uh, she totally uh, swerved to miss a deer and mm. hit her head on the steering wheel and walked out of it like a, a total boss. While and... the car was still on fire, because technically, it was. Oh, and, and there was a fire. Yeah. Look, this is way too much sounding like it could get people in trouble. I don't know if I even want to know any more of this, so why don't we just... Why don't we just stop this whole conversation with me knowing things? Sure, the three nerd. young students make their way into the main doors of Kolok High, leaving the parking lot. The hallways are long, despite its small size. The facility, again, very large. Inside the first area of the school are the senior lockers, where Marcus is currently resides. Sky and Rachel share one further down the hall, where the juniors rest. But Marcus, you feel an eye on you. As you look to your corner, you see the eye of Sammy Riley, 17-year-old junior, Rachel's ex-boyfriend, staring at you intently from behind a locker door. He's, take take I, a picture, it'll last I longer. Know, he's, not, he's not still leaving messages on your answering machine, is he? Well, you know, every once in a while, but... 
Hey, I'll, I, 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 I'll deal with it, okay? Just let me handle it. I mean, I could deal with it, you know And that saying? goes for you, too. I'll handle it. Got it. You're a grown woman. You do your womanly things. Are people still looking at me? How could they not? You're covered in blood. I know. It's so cool. Rachel leaves the two of you next to Marcus's locker uh, to move down the hallway to confront Sammy. You're unsure of what they might be saying, but it does not appear that Sammy's taking it well. You think you should uh, step in and say something? It's just so weird. I and mean, like, you think that she'd be fine just hanging around with me, but she seems to always want to talk to Sammy. Yeah, like, because he's a freak. But you think she's, like, over him, right? I don't know. Hey, Rachel! You okay? As Rachel seems satisfied with her interaction with Sammy, she starts to make her way back towards the two of you. But before doing so, a clash emits between you and Rachel as freshman Billy Baker, 15, skids across the floor on his back. Following the trail of his trajectory, it leads you up to sophomore Wallace Ronnie. Little coma boy. Better stay down or you're going to get hurt. Yeah. You got more smart ass shit to say now? <laughs> yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, comas. Crazy, right? <laughs> you're not going to say shit about my mom again? No, nah, definitely not. Not about how supple her breasts probably are. You want to fucking go right now, no, little coma boy? You say another word about my mom's tits, and I will fucking wreck you. What if I say something about your mom's tits? Hey, man, this has nothing to do with Marcus. I, I'm just... Look. As Marcus tries to defuse the situation, putting his seniority into play, I'm going to ask that a charm roll is made <laughs> with a difficulty of six. All right. Given that you are trying to intimidate this young boy. Got an eight. So what was that? What I, was that you were saying about I, me and Comb Boy? And I, 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 pick Com I pick Billy like off the ground and like, Brush him off and then stand behind him. I like, don't have any problems, Marcus. Just man, the freak was talking about my mom's tits. Well, she got some good ones. God damn it, Marcus! <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. Just leave the boy alone. He's a he came out of a coma. Come on, man. Why are you gonna be like that? Look, you leave him alone. I might be able to hook you up with an extra soft taco the next time you roll around to Taco Bell. It's a TBE. No cheese. No cheese. I'll keep the cheese pump away from it. All right. All right. Get out of here, man. Go to pre-algebra or whatever you sophomores look, read. As Wallace walks away down the room, passing young Billy Baker. And continues on down the hall. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate hey. it. Thanks, Billy, you, you okay? Oh, hey, Rachel. Yeah, I'm fine. And we're still on for after school, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Geometry, right? Whatever you want. It's fine. Cool. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. I mean, it, it's my house, right? Oh. So. Yeah, it's cool. Your You'll come, I'll see you at my place. Billy. Yes, I'll see you. Cool. At your place. Marcus, better be careful. I mean, I think, seriously. Uh, Billy's <laughs> trying to make a place I mean, for your girl. I just kind of helped you out. And no, you're I all kind of googly eyed <laughs> oh, right now. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just messing around. Stick to, stick to mom tits, all right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. She's really hot, though, right? Yeah, she's His pretty, mom? She is pretty hot. So yeah. that's like you're in your right. <laughs> all oh, right. Man. Yeah. That was pretty cool of you, Marcus. The bell for yeah. first period rings. The students go their own way, moving through the world as if it were any normal day. Notes were passed. Classes were slept through. Some maybe even learned a thing or two. Let's move forward to gym class, inexplicably placed just before lunch, under the assumption that teenagers sweat less than full-grown humans, I can only assume. Wearing school-issued shorts 
and T, Rachel jogs laps around the basketball court, catching up with fellow Kolox Cinema indentured servant, Mickey Jones, 16, sophomore. Hey, Mickey! Uh, hey! Zero, what <coughs> the hell? I am so sorry, not sure why I said that. You're, you're not a zero. I didn't, shit. Yeah, um, um where have you <clears> been? <throat> I've been covering your shifts for like a week. You don't know how much I've had to talk to Brad. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just really sick. I'm um, just worried about you. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks for covering. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I mean, any extra money for me. Do you, you wouldn't know what reels are coming in this week. <clears throat> uh, no, I haven't been paying much attention. I just sit up Rachel, by the Rachel, very camera. clearly trying to change the topic of conversation. But... I'm not gonna, you're gonna be back, right? I mean, I don't remember seeing anything on the schedule. I I wish something would come out that would, so we could stop showing Silence of the Lambs on yeah, all three screens. But just, you'll be back, right? It puts the lotion on it. Cause you know, I've covered worries. for you for a week. It's um, a lot of hours. Hey, what do you? It's really just us what do you working there. Do you up in the booth all night anyway? You sure aren't watching the movies. I mean, no, I'm, I'm just up there writing, but you know, a break would be nice if you're gonna come back to work. I've been pushing boss to get a reel of Troll 2. I read about it in The Observer. It's supposed to be the worst film ever made. Yeah, it is. Like, how does something so I don't that is the that worst night. even get made? I don't... Look. Okay, and I, I, I guess Team In 2 is coming out All right, listen, if you need and, me to hey, cover for look, you... Marcus won't shut up about it, so when it comes out, will you just get him in for free for me? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I could do that. And... I know you're upset because you very clearly keep bringing it up, but mm. do you mind covering for me some more tonight? I might have to leave work early. Just tonight? Just tonight. I'm back. I promise. I'll, 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 I'll owe you a lot. I, I, I owe you a lot already. All right. You're just lucky I need the money. Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing to do with your dad, right? Is everything okay? Um, no. no everything's, everything's fine. Uh, thanks, kid. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. The bell rings as Rachel waves goodbye to Mickey. She veers towards the entrance of the gymnasium where Marcus awaits their talk. Uh, hey, let me grab my bag really quick, okay? I brought some grub with me. You mind sitting out front with me? Yeah, of course. So, okay. uh, what's, what's going on? She casually grabs her bag of clothes and her little knapsack filled with lunch and leads you out the front of the school towards the front steps. Um. I'm ready. Yeah, you got your bag. Got it. No, I want to... I want to come over to your house tonight when you get off work. Okay. Mickey already said she'd cover for me. Yeah, we've done this before. <laughs> I, uh... I stole some condoms out of my parents' room, um, but but if you don't want to use them, that's okay too. <clears throat> oh, oh! Look, we've talked about this. It's like you know, I want to just as much as you want to, but I just I know my Look, parents. It's now, it's now or never, Marcus. I mean, it's now or never. We 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 just started dating for like a month. We've got time, and look. I know my parents aren't home that much, but if they come home at the time that we're doing that, there's gonna be a lot of issues. Like when you when they come over and you're just hanging out watching movies with me, which is great, which I love, like that's fine. But anything more than that, I could get in really big trouble, you know. But that doesn't mean I don't want to, because I do. Like, I mean, I'm a dude, and like you're a lady, and like that's what we do, right? But I just. I just keep getting in trouble, you know? Rachel grabs her remaining lunch, stands defiantly, turns, and walks back into Kolok High. Rachel, look, we can, let's just talk about it. Why don't you come over? We'll, we'll... Oh, man. Marcus's stupid, rejection stupid, appears stupid. to hurt Rachel more than he assumed it would. As Marcus sits on the curb in front of the school, you notice in front of you an odd coin I pick it up. It appears you pick it up. 
Interestingly, the coin has a face on both sides. A face you've never seen before and don't recognize, with raised text reading, Aspire to be more. Aspire to be more? Is this a game token? I might have to try this next time at the arcade. A bell rings as lunch ends. So I'm gonna put the coin in my pocket, hold on to it. Make note of that. Okay. The day passes with little to no interaction between Sky, Rachel, or Marcus. Rachel kept mostly to herself. That is until she arrived at the Baker household for her scheduled tutoring session with Billy. These sessions are good for both of them. Billy doesn't really need a tutor. He's not bright, per se, but he's not dumb either. You would just assume after waking from a 10-year-long coma, one would need a tutor. One would need a lot of things. Billy seems to enjoy playing along. Rachel doesn't mind giving the kids some friendship that she just happens to get paid for. What did you say to that kid this morning? Well, I was talking about how... Uh, it's gross. He <laughs> seems so pissed. Well, I was, yeah, I was talking about how it'd be funny if like his mom could nurse me because she's got... Oh my! What? I was saying that I'd love to be like a baby. That in his is family. so <laughs> gross. I know it's gross. I'm sorry. You are sick. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely a 15 year old boy. Yeah, for sure. If you think about it, with the coma though, I'm only like five. Are you saying that? Because I'm like a badge of honor, or? <laughs> yeah, I think I guess it's not very cool, is it? <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you still want to be nursed? No, no, it's just, well, I mean, by her, absolutely. Because, <laughs> the, no, it's not like a weird baby thing. It's because she's like, you know, oh, <laughs> this I is gross. It. I know, yeah, she's got big breasts, Billy. Wow, okay. Look, you got it made here, kid. You're what, like the here? nicest parents, you know? I mean, they're pretty nice, yeah. They're kind of weird, though. As she looks down at the geometry book and kind of takes note of your hand, it feels like she wants to ask you something that she's been wanting to ask for a very long time. Did they ever tell you why you have an index finger, even though no one else in your family does? Like, you're not a 10. You know, you were, you were born here, and... I never, <sighs> never thought to ask. I mean, I was born in Hong Kong, and I'm pretty sure my parents cut mine off just to make me fit in. For real? Yeah. I mean, like me not being a 10 would be the thing that makes me fit in. I'm probably know? just like adopted or something stupid. <laughs> like people are going to see my face before they see this nub you, on wait, my hand. Do you think people think I'm a freak? I mean, you're a local that still has their index finger. It's. I, I, I've been wanting to ask for a while. I'm sorry. It just it weirded me out when I saw it. I'm sure it weirds out other people too. It's probably. Huh. Yeah. There's just nobody else in town who was born here. Yeah, I guess that is kind of weird. I don't know. I don't like to ask too many questions. I guess that's why I'm left-handed. So I had the option because <laughs> a lot of you and no one you in this town's left-handed yeah. except hey, that, for that, tens. That tie. Hey, let's. Uh, what about? Why do they call them? Why do they call them right angles? Huh? All right, Billy. So when are you gonna get a girlfriend? I like to say I'm correct-handed, <laughs> not left-handed. Say it's one's right and one's correct. Come on, Billy. Who are you crushing <laughs> on? <laughs> no one. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. Look, don't worry about the whole late bloomer thing. You're like a fine wine. You'll get better with age. Or I'm sorry, that was dumb. Nah, it's it's true though. I for sure. I heard that on TV or, or something. Or like cheese. You get like stinkier with age. I didn't think about it. But that also way. it's it's better if you age it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I got I got I got my eyes on a couple girls. They're I'm just giving it time, you know. Just uh te you know, testing the waters. Get a, put a toe in first piece of advice 
don't tell anyone you want to milk them oh, or nurse them or definitely be nursed not. by them or anything like that. Yeah, like save that gross. for college or something if you make it that far. Right. Because <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> Look, Bill, you're a good kid. I've always... I don't kind of liked you. Like... Oh, it's just my little brother's a real piece of shit. You, you sorry, like... I didn't... <sighs> sorry, I, I just... You're a good kid, and you're fun, and you, you don't take things too seriously, and my family's so uptight, and... I just... I, I guess I'm really envious of your family, you know? I mean, you can hang out as much as you want. Anytime. They like you. I know. Like clockwork, Sky arrives as punctual as usual. Rachel packs up her books quickly from Billy's old wood r dining room table. As she runs out the door, Billy, you hear her yell back into the house. Oh, hey, Billy, thanks for letting me borrow your camera. I left it in a bag by your door. Take it easy, kid. She jumps into the passenger seat of the Jeep again. <laughs> like she had been so many days in these last couple months. Rachel wonders if Skye knows how much her friendship has meant to her the last couple months, especially after what happened to her car. She feels guilty for all the things she keeps from Skye and wishes she could be as good a friend to Skye as Skye is to her. Tacos, tacos, tacos. How many do you think I could eat? Probably 10. I think the um, max I had was Six. Marcus and I got in a fight today. Oh. No tacos. No, well, look, I told him I wanted to do it tonight and yes? at his house, and he chickened out. What? That's like every guy's dream. Look, I feel bad. I, I feel... I shouldn't pressure him like this. I... Do you feel like that's he said no because you're pressuring him or like what did he just like no I can't I, I gotta have a purity ring I can't do this dude I'm Marcus. <laughs> no, it's probably a good thing he turned me down though, right? What? He wants it to mean something. I was just so embarrassed. Yeah. I, I have to let him know. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't end it like that. Oh well, yeah. Why are you saying sorry to me? I mean, talk to him. He obviously means a lot to you. Even though you guys haven't been dating that long. But I mean, after couple months, Sammy, you deserve a good guy. And the way he stuck uh, up for Billy, he seems like he's kind of cool. He's really great. Yeah. I mean, it's... I wish you two were better friends. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to I mean, you say know. That. I just, oh, it's okay. It would just make things so much easier <laughs> if you two got along. Like, yeah. it puts me in what, such a weird position. I don't not get along with him. He's just Marcus. What you does know? that even mean? Everything, obviously. It's... No, please enlighten me, Sky. What does he's just Marcus even mean? I mean, you. Listen, I get it. We're getting older, and boyfriends are going to take up a bit more of our time. But, like, the way you were with Sammy, I didn't even exist anymore. You were just, like, gone. And it feels like almost the same thing is happening again with Marcus. And I can't help but get a little, a little scared that I'm going to lose you all over again. You're my best friend. You're not going to lose me this time, okay? I mean, I just... I need my time oh, that doesn't make sense just I just wish you two would get along that's all just try to be friends with him see how you said it that's just like no, you know I just I because dearest best friend of mine Rachel because it is important to you it is important to me and I will try I will try because, yeah, you mean a lot to me, and I don't want to lose that. If that makes things easier for you, then it will make things easier for us. And if I get to hang out with you more, cool. Who knows? Maybe Marcus, uh, maybe him and I have some common ground. I think you do. T 
tacos. It's a great place to start, free tacos. Goodbye, my love, you know that. We cut to the Deer Crossing Fuel Station, where one of 1990's greatest technological advancements is reduced to a teen hangout spite operated currently by one decent kid and one juvenile delinquent. Welcome to Taco Bell Express. Can I take your order? Hey. <laughs> you crazy man. <laughs> a young Mallory Jenkins motions the jerking off symbol towards Marcus as he speaks into his walk-up window headset. Usually Marcus is a little more amused by this. So he continues doing it for even longer. Come on, Marcus. Tacos. Look, I'm not into the... the Jocko Taco today, okay? Sorry, man. I've had a rough day, all right? <laughs> What's into you? You barely said a word since you clocked in. All right, I'm going to tell you something, Mallory. And I know I know how you can be quite the blabbermouth. So you got to keep this between us. This is, gotta, this is bro to bro, okay? Dude. I'm 100% going to tell everyone and paint it all around the school. See, this is just, no, I'm not. Come on. Just... Fine, tell me. Hold on, my mic's still on. No, you don't need to hear any of this. Just, it'll be done in like two minutes. All right. All right, you're good. So, you know, you know Rachel, who I've been seeing for like the past month or so, right? Yeah. So, I think she wants to be more than just dating, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. She wants to, like, go. Look, will you, will you stop with the gesture? Stop it! <laughs> stop! So what's the problem, man? You know, what if, like, I don't know, what if my parents find out? Or what if she gets pregnant? Or what if, you know, there could be all kinds of different things that can happen as a result of that, you know? I don't or know if I'm ready for that. you could get your dick wet and feel great. Did you ever think about that one? Okay, well, that's an option too, yes. But there's a lot of things that could happen after. And also just what could happen with us. Like once you put that into the relationship, it's very serious. We've only been together for a little bit. But every time she brings it up and I kind of am like, well, I want to, but not right now. She gets all upset. I haven't even talked to her in the past week. And then she showed up and Sky was bloody and she punched her in the face or some crazy stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I heard she got in a fight with a homeless guy. That's okay. Yeah, sure. You know how Sky is. Yeah, she's nuts, man. Yeah. I'd tap that. You would tap one of these tacos if I... i tap tacos all the time. You're not supposed to. We got to keep our A rating, dude, for first off. I'm second. joking. I'm... I don't fuck tacos. You don't really think I fuck tacos, do you? Uh, remember that one night when you were all Okay, like... remember how we're not supposed to talk about things <laughs> okay, okay, that we say we're okay. not going to talk about? All right, all right, all right. Well, anyway. I don't fuck tacos. Anyway, man. Like, what do I do here? Like, how do I make, how do I keep her happy without, you know, moving too fast? I don't know. I don't. Okay, between you and me. Yeah. And you don't tell anyone, like, I don't actually know how to talk to girls. You know this. Like, we don't, we, we've had this discussion so many times. Dude, why are you asking me for help? I am literally the token virgin. I don't, why, why are you talking to me? Like, call up some helpline or something. Get on the radio. Oh, dude, it's because, I mean, look, I know that I'm, like, on campus, and because, you know, people assume because of this, that means I got that, you know what I'm saying, but I, As this I conversation haven't... is going, a young individual standing at the counter of Taco Bell <laughs> Express is casually handed their bag of loose tacos by Mallory as the conversation continues. But I haven't done it either, man. I know. So I don't know. Like it's it, like the first time is like supposed to be important, right? You, we, you see all those movies Says we watch. Who? Says every single movie we watch. But that's good. That but music starts playing high, and then it's all slow mo, and then it's like under the cover sheet stuff, depending on what rating the movie is, and like it's always an important moment. But then it either makes things greater or makes things worse. I don't know which one it's gonna be. Is it gonna be where we get the happy ending with the music? You and playing? I watch different movies. Oh, well, okay. the ones I watch, it just keeps going and going. I'm talking about movies going. that you get in front of the curtain at the video store, man. Okay, well, 
those movies are eliciting like an overreaction from you because they're fucking movies, man. Look, every dumbass you see out in that parking lot, they fucked. I mean, not each other, but everybody has sex. Dude, it's not a big deal. We're just like building it up to be too big of a thing. I bet it's not even that great anyway. So you think... I'm just saying that. I don't mean that. I, <laughs> I don't want to get played so bad. You've, you've painted many scenarios when we've talked here. Yeah. Painted but, these walls with my dick. Oh. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. I don't know. This shit makes me uncomfortable. Well, it makes me uncomfortable, but I got to do something. Yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah. Can I talk to Marcus, please? It's for you, dude. All right. I'm so stupid. She could just come through the door. Okay. Just fill in the meat. Just take squeezers. Hey. Uh. Hey. Sorry about earlier. Um. Can you take a five-minute break? Uh. Yeah. Sure. Mallory can keep everything down. Yeah, I'm sure the Neanderthal can handle five minutes alone. Hey. Hey. Okay. Hey. All right. I'll be right back. Meet me out front. Hey, dude. I gotta take a. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you got to fix your whatever. Just, I mean, just be cool. Play it cool, man. I, admit, I am Mr. Cool. I invented cool. You're sweating through your shirt. That's part of the cool. It's cool sweat. I know it's hot back here, man, but it's hard to, like, here, just, just. All right. Mallory I'll... throws a towel towards Marcus as he then uses to pat off the sweat before heading out the front of the gas station where he sees... No, 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 they're then Rachel. Hey, what's going on, girl? Why are you talking like that? I don't know, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. I've never heard you talk like that the entire just time. Just saying, like, I was just trying to, you know, say what's going on. Girl, you okay. know? Okay. Are you... Marcus, I, look, I, I, I'm sorry. I went, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. Sky, please back away. You don't have to hear all this. Sky's here, too? I just came for the tacos, and, like, you guys had this conversation. Just, I'm, I'm sure just gonna, Mallory uh, will give you tacos. Yeah, eat, I don't want to touch any time. tacos that guy gives me. Marcus, after, please, can you get uh, any, just like, back, tacos? I'm get, backing back up. up. Back away. Just back up. The tacos, okay? Well, okay, I will get you to just leave right now. Just right. get away from this area. Just go stand on the other side of the gas station yeah. or something. I don't know. This is my car. And why have you not changed your shirt? You still have blood on it. Everyone needs to see this, okay? It's like a work of art. See you That's Nobody's your best friend. Fuck with her. That's Nobody's your best friend. It's All fine. Right. Look, I just, I want to say I'm sorry. I overreacted. I mean, no, no, I didn't. That's bullshit. I did not overreact. I, you know, I just. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry, too. Like, I, I didn't want to make it seem like I didn't want to do more with you. I mean, I've been enjoyed everything that we've been doing together. I mean, everything from our first date, seeing Home Alone together, to just hanging out at my place, watching movies, talking. I mean, you're you're one of the people I can just talk to for hours, like about real stuff. I mean, I talk to Mallory for hours, but none of that stuff's real. That's just crazy dude talk. But like, when you, I feel like I, I feel like the type of person that I want to be when this is all done and I leave here and go back to LA, you know? Hopefully. You make me feel like a... I don't and know. you can do all that. And we will. We will. We'll do all that. And that's why I got nervous. Because it's been our dream of ours when we've talked to say that we want to do this. I was just worried that if something happens with either getting caught or getting pregnant or whatever, that that could ruin everything and then we get stuck here. I've seen so many people that have been stuck because they jumped into something so early and they don't get to fulfill the dreams, you know? And then I figure once that starts to happen, then we can do everything. Everything we wanted to do. Me and you. Rachel may or may not be charmed. Difficulty of five. <laughs> All right. Uh, charmed. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> you have 
three tokens available. <laughs> in the future, when you are together as a group, hopefully, you can share tokens as you help each other out. But given that you are on your own in this situation... Uh, I will use two of those tokens. Okay, stop. You're embarrassing me. I grab your stop. hand. You're, stop. You're embarrassing me. Sorry, I was just trying to make you feel better and try to lighten the mood, you know. Well, I came into this mood already stressed. I just, I wanted to say I'm sorry. We'll talk later. Look, Del, okay, let's no, work, no, we'll, we'll work this out. Look, why don't you just come over? We'll talk later. I promise. Okay. Well, let me go get Sky or tacos then. At least. Can you at least do that? Rachel sits inside the Jeep, buckles herself in. Marcus! Can, tacos! Can we just go? Can we go? Tacos! Can we go? You promised me tacos! You made can me step away from my car! Go. To go through the drive thru. Dude, I'm hella hungry! You pull up into the drive thru. Yes! What's up, sexy? Oh, God. Marcus, put Marcus on. I don't want to talk to you. Marcus is crying in the girls' room. Oh, my God. I heard you want some tacos. <laughs> Not if you touch them. I'm the only one working here, baby. All right. You know what, Rachel? You were right. We're not getting tacos today. And I hope you're happy. You... This isn't worth my time. I got blood on my shirt. I'm cooler than this. Just... We're leaving. I don't As need anything. As you drive past the drive through window, you see Mallory mouthing a taco. Disgusting freak. As you drive past, let us take a ride across the river to Kolok Cinema. As two friends, Rachel and Skye, hug and say their goodbyes like they would on any other day, Rachel makes her way into the cinema for a seemingly normal night of work, cleaning the gum from the bottom of the stiff interlocking chairs and scraping burnt kernels off of white-hot aluminum. Monday nights are the slowest night at the cinema, a night filled with elderly couples and creepy middle-aged men who arrive alone and leave halfway through the film. Rachel clocks in and joins Mickey at the concession slash ticket counter combo. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. Um, what are you doing here? I thought I was covering for you. No, just, uh, just tonight, later. Well, actually, you know what? I, it's better no, you're no. here and I'm not alone with Brad. I, you don't need to cover for me anymore tonight. Are you sure? I, I, I got it. It didn't work out. What, though? What happened? Oh, it's, it's nothing. I just, uh, I was gonna... <sighs> I was gonna fuck Marcus, but he said no. Oh. Um. I'm obviously... Uh, I have some pent-up aggression about this. Um, yeah. Sorry. I don't. No, it's okay. Um, do you want to like go take it out on the gum under the seats? No, no, just. You know, I can still cover for you if you just want to go home. <clears throat> or no, you in don't. fact, no. I owe you a favor. I uh, if you wanted to take off early tonight, I could finish up, clock out by myself. I I owe you. You've covered for me so much the last week. You know, I'd love to get out of here and just go right somewhere where I don't have to listen to the trash yeah, is playing. Is there even anyone here tonight? Uh, no. Brad left early, so it'll just be you. more creepers would be into this torture porn that's playing. Yeah, there's not really anyone in there. Then again, strong lead females isn't really their thing. Yeah. So, you'll pretty much be alone if you're okay with that. Yeah, it's... It's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. All right. Um, I can handle it. As long as that's cool, you're okay. Yeah. No, I think it'll be good. I, th I think I need some alone time. Okay. Uh, I'll just head out and get some writing done or something. Um, but I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay.
The night comes to a close, like it would any other night. Billy is standing in front of a tall mirror on his bedroom door. Billy is doing what? What's up, Rachel? Uh, are you fewer than 90 degrees? Because you're pretty acute. No, it's, it's dumb. Hey, hey, Rachel. I'd like to get, I'd like to make some right angles with you. No. Take off my shirt. Like flexing. You notice the bag Rachel left for you. I'm going to go uh, grab my camera out of it. In the bag is your camera. Oh. And what appears to be a diary, a locked diary, pale blue, well kept, almost pristine. Oh my gosh, Rachel's diary. I'm gonna have to return this for sure. Maybe I should try to open it first though. It appears to be locked. <sighs> Maybe I should call her. Would you like to call Rachel, Billy? No, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to her at school. Sure, Great. She won't miss it. The night comes to a close. Marcus, upon finishing his shift, tries calling Rachel. No answer. Mickey makes her way home like she would any normal night, late as usual after spending a night writing, I assume. Sky, what were you up to tonight? Oh, man, this new midi fig is going to make the best collection, or it's gonna just add to my collection that no one will ever know about for how great of a painter I am. Jeez. Great. The day ends. Nothing remarkable at all. As normal as normal can be. Four AM March fifth. One single light is on in the baker's garage. Billy loads his single speed all terrain tired Schwinn with this morning's latest edition of Stone Valley Chronicle. Makes his way out the front of the garage to where he reaches the corner, drops the bike, picks up his skateboard from behind a trash can, and throws a couple of the papers into his backpack. Circling through the east side of town, past the affordable housing complex, Billy takes a right over the Riley River where it's customary for him to hawk a loogie in defiance of the river's namesake. But this morning, Billy, as you begin to build up the phlegm in anticipation, you are surprised to see a figure standing on the bridge. This figure looking out over the river, it's hard to make out through the fog anything other than the shape. A not too familiar smell hits Billy's nose like a skunk rolled in earth. Do you continue forward? Rachel stands, smoking a joint, looking over the river. 
She's wearing a red robe and gold platform heels. She seems surprised, but not concerned to see Billy. Almost a look of disappointment, but not in herself, but the situation. Today's the day, Billy. What? Soon, I think. What, what are I you doing here, Rachel? I think I was going to see you out here. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I didn't try to stop it. Billy? What? Not really. What does that say about me? Do you, though? Do any of us, though? We let it come. Only keeping it at bay till it's literally knocking on our doorstep. Maybe y'all secretly wanted it, we just don't talk about it. The one thing every one of us can't escape. And again, I might be completely wrong about that. A sound starts to emit from behind Rachel, just over the railing of the bridge. She lets out a sigh as her eyes turn down at the corners. A sadness, a calm sadness, can be seen pushing through her body from head to toe. A light that starts like a thread appears hovering. The thread widening to the width of a pencil trails down an interlocking threads like a flashlight pushing through a zipper. It begins, release, each individual interlocking thread ripping apart aggressively with each rip pulling the widening gap further apart. Planted firmly, a sense of vertigo overtakes him. A figure, two figures step out, rip, zip, silhouetted by the immense form of shifting, flowing light. It glitches, stretches, resets, resumes, rip, zip. The figures appear to be wearing suits, tall mohawks, their eyes zip shut, their mouths zip shut. They speak. Pay it, you will. To the end, to the end, to the end. Slight was the Slight thing, was you, the bought, thing you, bought. you bought. Small was the dead you, you thought. Rip. Zip. A thunderous boom awakes Marcus, Mickey, Sky, and Sammy. As a fierce wind blows the blankets off their beds. A bright light and the figure of Rachel hovering above them. A mirage. A reflection. Transparent. Her dark robe falls, revealing her naked and bruised body beneath, withering at the pain that can only be described as a reverse birth. Billy watches as the robe sways in the wind, falling into the river below. Rachel begins to cry out. I, I don't know what I did. This isn't fair. This isn't fucking fair. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I didn't do this. Please. Please. I, I don't, I don't want this. I'm not fucking ready. As her body gets pulled inside the gelatinous, but yet sharp light by the suited figures, she grasps for the edge as she yells out to be heard by all of our passengers. Wait, I, I know why. I know why I said it. Don't forget what I said, okay? Whatever you do, don't forget what I said. Don't forget what I said. Don't forget what her I body said. Ripped. Don't forget what I Zip. said. Don't Torn in two, as Don't the zipper closes, our passengers, through her cries, see what, see what she sees, feels what she feels, as the light takes you all in. Don't forget what I said. Don't forget what I said. Don't forget what I said.
Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to Colock 1991. It means the world to me that you're watching, and uh, I, I really, really do hope you're enjoying the show. We've all worked really hard on this. Now, on the show, I'm playing kind of a character as the GM, so I want to run you through some things as me, Zach, the producer and uh, co-founder of this company, to tell you all the ways that you can support the show while it's happening live. Something that's really important for us here at Hyper RPG is that you get to be a part of everything we do. Sometimes that's financial, sometimes it's not. Now, all of these shows are paid for directly by us. You, you fund them. The audience funds these shows. These are almost 100% funded by the audience. So when you come in and you think, oh, this is really great, think about subscribing. Or you can go to oneshot.straylogic.com and you can get tokens for the players. These tokens allow them to do special abilities that you'll see on their character, uh, their little character blips that come up on screen, or it allows them to boost their dice rolls. You can also add evidence to rumors. This is where you get to a little bit, be a little bit creative. You get to add on special things that you're, uh, you're reading about these rumors you make that up. It's up to you. You get to build onto the world as it's happening. And then we do big giveaways at the end of the show. And when we hit our goal for the show, we also do a giveaway where we bring someone out of the chat and into the game. Now, you can go to discord.gg slash hyperrpg to join our Discord role-playing room for this show. We actually have people that are set up in our Discord role-playing people in the town. And then I'll bring them out of the Discord and put them on the show itself. That's one of the ways you can interact non-financially. We also have polls that will come up during the show and things like that. We're always trying to push the form here at Hyper RPG to get you involved and make this show a collaborative process between myself, the players, and you and the audience. So thank you so much for watching and for supporting, and make sure to keep watching Colock 1991 every Monday night at 6 p.m. This is not a new story. This is merely another chapter of an endless strife. A tale of blood that's been spilling for millennia. In a fringe galactic arm, centuries-long warp storms cease making its resource-rich planets traversable again and ripe for conquest. The Imperium of Man launch a crusade to reclaim old human colonies established before the storms began. The ruinous powers, knowing of the weakened warp, flood the quadrant, seeking to plague every corner with chaos. The Tau and the Eldari form a temporary alliance to rid the Imperium and the ruinous powers from the untainted galaxy. And the Orcs, drawn to the smell of blood and riches, seek glory through the crucible of battle. The race to control the system begins. This is not a new story, but it is our story. Welcome to the Grim Dark Dawn. We begin again. We open on a young woman perched in a pristine apartment overlooking the valley. She sits, wait, no, she stands, stops, hold on, okay, yes, I'll tell them. She says this is not her story, it's yours, so we should shift focus. 6.30 a.m., March 5th, Billy Baker awakes to find himself covered in some sort of clear, viscous liquid. His vision, blurry, it appears his glasses have fallen off of his face. Dear passenger, please roll a difficulty check of seven in brains. That's a one. You have ten tokens. I'll use six. Okay. Billy finds his glasses next to him in the wet rocks. Upon putting them on and adjusting to the world around him, he realizes he lays in the dirt beside Crater Lake. You can feel, Billy, the warmth of the sun piercing through the fog on the left side of your face. Your skateboard. Well, who knows? You'd have to look for it. Rachel! Rachel? Papers litter the water oh, around no. you as your oh, backpack oh, no. 
washed up on shore. Go grab my backpack and look for my skateboard. If you would like to find your skateboard, please roll your brains difficulty of five. It's a three. You have four more I'll tokens. I'll use two. Okay. You find your skateboard propped up against a rock. It's wet and covered in leaves and grass. It appears to have gotten banged up. You, though, seem fine. Great. I'm going to run to the road and skate to the police station. Billy runs to the road. You are currently at Crater Lake. The police station is on the opposite side of town on the southwest end. It's going to take you a while. I have to tell somebody. I have to I have to call the cops. First first house I see, I, I got to go in. As you start moving forward, you get very close to the assisted living complex where a lot of out-of-towners and low-income workers in Kolok currently reside. It's an apartment complex. I'm sure there's a lot of people there, Billy. I run in and bang on one of the doors or talk to the first, first person I see. Billy runs up to the front of the apartment building's in, uh, entrance. It's 6.30 a.m. Now we'll say 7. Please roll your charm. Difficulty of 10. 10. An individual standing in the lobby notices you banging on the door. Comes over. Uh, I'm sorry. We're, who are you? Do you live here? Hi, I'm Billy Baker. I am the, the paper boy. I was out delivering papers and I saw something. I need to call the cops. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. I, c come in, come in, come in. Um, the, the, behind the counter here, there's a, uh, a, a, a phone. What did you see? I, I, I can't explain. I got I to call the cops oh, okay, immediately. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this isn't some prank, is it? No, absolutely not. You're not... No, my friend Rachel seven. is missing. Who? I watched her go missing. Who? It doesn't matter. Give me a phone. Oh, okay. The individual hands you a rotary phone, the cord stretched out over the desk. Uh, I will go dial 911. Okay. Yes, hello? Hi, my name is Billy Baker. I'm the paper boy. I saw something. Hi, Billy. How are you doing? Why are you calling us so early? Uh, uh, Rachel Jewell was just taken. I'm sorry, Billy. Who? Rachel Jewell. She's 17. She's like a junior. Billy. I don't know any Rachel, Billy. Are you... Billy, have you been taking your medication? Yes, I've you... been taking my medication. Rachel Jewell is missing. Is this a coma thing? She went missing on the bridge above Crater Lake. Billy, I don't appreciate the call. Uh, the... We need cops over at the bridge. I'm not kidding. Billy, the Jewel family has no children. Yeah, Rachel. She's my tutor. Talk to my parents. Call my parents immediately. Tell them that I said Rachel is missing. Billy, I am going to call your parents. Where are you right now? I'm at the assisted living place with all the, with all the yeah. old people. Okay, well, it's not just old people. We don't... It's assisted income living, Billy. Listen, I don't need a lecture right now. There's a woman missing. Okay, Billy. Well, we're going to call your uh, parents, okay? Just stay right where you are. Yeah, well, don't take your time about it. Just stay right where you are, Billy. Don't go anywhere. Does Billy stay right where he is? No, I hop on my skateboard and skate into town. Hey, where are you going? I got to go tell somebody that cares. Okay, kid. Be careful, old lady. Old man. Sorry. Old man, obviously. Sorry, I'm... I was in a coma. Damn, Speed kids. off. Billy speeds off on his skateboard, going west into town. Where do you go, Billy? Hmm. I want to go to Rachel's house. Would I know where it is? You would know where Rachel's house is. It's right next to Sky's house. Not too far from you, just a little bit further north. That's where I'm headed. So you make your way that direction. Let us cut to now the bedroom of Sky Hawkins. You awake, Sky, covered in some sort of viscous liquid. 
Your room. Destroyed. Things pushed and moved all around. What happened, Sky? <sighs> what is happening? What happened to Rachel? Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I, I gotta get over to her house right now. Oh, what the frick? Oh my god, what is all this stuff in my room? I'm gonna open my door and head out to Rachel's house. You run through the front of your house. Your parents seem quite surprised to see you dashing out as you make your way across toward the Jewel House. I go running up to the Jewel's house door and start banging on it. Rachel! Rachel! Yeah, hold on, hold on. As you hear a voice coming from inside the house, the moments that you spend waiting seem like some of the longest moments of your life as you hear the loud thumping footsteps moving through the house, as you hear the first latch and then the second. Come on, come on. And the door opens just slightly through a chain. Y yeah, what the, Hawkins kid, what do you, what, what the fuck do you want? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, it's, I know it's early. Is Rachel there? I need to know she's okay. Who? Rachel. Who the... Look, Hawkins. I don't appreciate being woken up this fucking early. You wanna get the hell off my lawn, okay? Get the fuck off of my front porch. Is that clear? I'm not leaving until I know that Rachel's okay. The door shuts. You hear the sliding lock disengage from itself as it comes forward. And he very strongly puts himself in front of you. Hawkins. Go the fuck home, little girl. I do not appreciate your attitude or being woke up at this hour. He reeks of alcohol as he pushes forward. The air carries that smell directly to you. Oh. You know what? All right, I'll leave. I can uh, see you don't care. Um. Get the fuck off my lawn, little girl. Yeah, I'm gonna get off your lawn. As you turn, you see in the distance a young Billy Baker riding his skateboard extremely fast up the hill. Now you do know that Billy Baker has a paper route, but he seems troubled. Billy? Mr. Jewel! S Sky! Don't, Billy, don't talk to him. He's super No, wasted. his daughter went missing. I saw. Rachel's missing. What did you see? What did you see? She was on the bridge in a robe, and then she got like, she got like taken. There was this light and all this stuff. And she got, like, taken. I saw the light, too. You saw what I, I saw? I saw the Mr. light. Mr. Jewel, we have to find Rachel. Mr. Jewel leans into the front of his house. He seems to be looking for something. As he appears again, revealing a baseball bat. God. As he begins walking towards the front of his lawn. Yeah, let's go to the bridge. Come on, bring the bat. He you now know. starts smashing the bat in his hand. I'm not going to tell you again. You kids get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? No, I'm serious. I'm sorry. I don't mean to wake you. Rachel is missing. Billy, I, I will beat the piss out of you, little boy. Now get lost. Billy, he's super drunk. I don't even know if he knows who Rachel is. I, I, I just got here and he started cussing at me. Let's just go. She always said you were trash, but I didn't realize you were this bad. All right, kid. I'm going to beat your ass if you don't get out of here right now as he starts moving very quickly towards you. Where should we, where should we go? Billy, quick, let's go back to my house. Okay. As you move back into Sky Hawkins' house and, you house and close the door, now with Billy Baker in tow, you see now your parents sitting at the kitchen table looking at you, questioning, uh, Sky, is everything okay? I heard yelling. Mom, Dad, things aren't okay. Uh, I saw something happen to Rachel last night and 
Billy saw the same thing, even even more than what I saw. Hi, I'm Billy Baker. I'm the paper boy. I was riding Billy? my skateboard, and I went over the, the the bridge over the river, and and Rachel was standing there in a robe, and she was Billy. Who? She was smoking marijuana. Oh, okay, God. Billy. Uh, Billy, Billy, it sounds like you need to report this to the police. I did. Oh. Wait, she's your daughter. Excuse me. Your daughter, no. Rachel. She's no. She's the one that's missing. That's, those were my parents. Oh, these are your parents? Yeah, that was, we were over at Rachel's That house. was Mr. Jewel. Did you smoke some marijuana? I don't know. Does that, is that how it works? I don't know. <laughs> Billy I thought is her parents quite confused were divorced. I given everything that he's seen in the last couple hours. Okay, so you told the police and I'm sure they're dealing with it, Billy. I'm Here, come. come well, on. can you help us? Because I don't think they took Mom, it seriously. Dad, you, you know how important Rachel is to me. She's You're my best friend. Sky's father stands and walks towards the front of the house where the two of you are. He puts his arm out and around your shoulder to comfort you. I, honey, I don't know a Rachel. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. I push it. You, you both seem really upset. So yeah, she's my tutor. The... She's missing. We should go to the cops. Okay, Billy, that's... I, I understand. I push you... his hand off. Dad, how do you not know who this is? How can you just... Wake up today and not know who this person is. This is my best friend. She lives next door to us. She's gone missing. Why don't you care? <laughs> oh, okay, Sky. Obviously, you're very upset. I am um, very upset. I want to be taken seriously. No, this is ridiculous. You're, you're being... Your mother stands after you hear a slam. Sky, I will not stand for you talking to your father that way in this house. Show some respect for your father and apologize now. I should probably get going. Honey, no, it's fine. It's it's fine. It's fine. Oh, Sky, obviously, you something's happened and you're very upset. Apologize to your father now. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm very upset. This is so messed up. I, uh, whenever I talk to you, you always seem to understand and get me and. Today, you're not like mom. You, you, we're always on the same page. I uh, look. I'm I'm here for you, Sky. I'm always here for you. You can you can talk to me anytime you want. I I think you might be very stressed about something. I, maybe there's something going on at school that's a lot on your mind. Rachel. College exams coming up. Uh, Rachel sad. is missing. That is all I'm I, upset I about. I'm not lying about I, anything. I, I, you, I'm sorry. I don't remember your friend. I don't remember a. I don't remember a, a, a Rachel. I'm. Is everyone on this side of town taking crazy pills? I gotta go. I run out the door. I'm sorry. I was in a coma. Billy Baker, while yelling that he was in a coma, makes his way out the front of the house. Sky Hawkins. I can't believe what's going on right now. I don't even, this doesn't even feel real. I don't even feel like I'm real. I wanna start slapping my face to try and see if this is the real thing. As Sky Hawkins slaps her face, her father very quickly rushes to grab her hand. Whoa, 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 Sky, 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 what are we, what are you doing? What's wrong? What's going on? She obviously doesn't give a shit about her parents. No she still has not apologized to you. I did apologize, Mom. No one's even talking to you. You wouldn't even know who Rachel is anyway, because you're always at work. A dish breaks in the kitchen as you hear your mother stomp to the other side of the house towards the master bedroom. Real mature. It's just please with you two, okay? I can just... I, I, I don't know what to say, honey. I, I feel uh, like I'm somehow upsetting you even more right now and that is not my intentions um i definitely don't want to do that uh, at all but look i gotta get over to the bike shop soon and um we'll, we'll talk after school okay yeah uh, when you come in for work we'll we'll talk maybe uh maybe we could call someone for help like a a, a, a therapist or something Sure, Dad. I gotta go get ready for school. Great. Gonna walk. We'll, we'll, we'll talk after school. Sure. I go back upstairs, grab my stuff, 
and then go. Sky Hawkins leaves her parental household unit. Sky Hawkins would like to go where? To the bridge where Billy Baker last saw Rachel. Okay. We cut now to Marcus Bennett. You awake, but you don't remember waking, Marcus. Your eyes are open, but the sting and dryness they feel makes you think that they've possibly been open for a while. As you sit up, you recognize the sheets, covers off of your bed, the posters on your wall, all on the ground. You're wet, but not water wet. It's a viscous wet, it's kind of sticky substance. Marcus, too, begins mumbling about whoever this Rachel individual might be. So I, um... I'm gonna call... I'm gonna call... I'm gonna call the cops as well. Marcus Bennett picks up the phone and calls the local police station. Hello? Go lock police. Yes, uh... Hi, I know this is going to sound weird, but I was just wondering, have you heard or seen anything happen at the, the, the Jewel residence? Can you repeat that? The, the Jewel residence. Like, has, has anything happened over there? This is, gonna, this is odd. I just um, had this thought or this belief. We that... had a call from an individual earlier, young Billy Baker. Maybe the two of you are in cahoots on this. This Billy Baker claimed that the Jewel family's daughter had somehow jumped off of a bridge, but the Jewel family does not have a daughter, as I'm sure you're aware, sir. I'm sorry, say, say that sir, again? Sir, your name, please. Uh... Marcus Bennett hangs up the phone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, go through, there's a, like, a, a dresser next to my bed. I'm gonna open it up, and I want to just look at photos that, cause, cause we just take photos together, and I wanted to look at the photos that she and I took. Interestingly enough, who is Rachel Jewell? You look at these photos, and they are of yourself, by yourself. There's. And then there's one that I hold up that's like that tick of her. That's just there's nothing there. It's just the back, the background. I'm gonna clean myself up and, and, and head out. Marcus Bennett makes his way downstairs through the house. His parents surprised to see him at such an early hour. Marcus, you going to school early today? Oh, you're here. Well, I mean, we usually leave by eight, but I well, sometimes you work late. Uh, you know, we do that. work late, yes, and we leave early. That's what's going to pay for your college, son. I know, I know. Hey, have you been turning in your applications, by the way? Yes, yes, I feel all. How my come we haven't gotten any acceptance letters yet? They take time. They process. It takes weeks sometimes. Okay, I... weeks. Yes. Okay. I... You need us to write a recommendation letter. We haven't been asked to do this, Marcus. I'm sure when the time comes, I'll get them the right one, okay? I'm trying, all right? I'm trying. I know I'm going to end up in some school. I'm trying. Okay, well, eat some breakfast before you go, please. Wait, can't I, I have to, to I gotta ask you guys something. I gotta ask you. And this is going to sound stupid. I, I, I know, but, like, you've seen her, so I'm sure you're aware. Like, you know who Rachel Jewell is, right? Like, my girlfriend. Girl's been here a couple times when you guys come home. Marcus's mother lets out an unexpected laugh <clears throat> and immediately tries to cover it up. Sorry, son. She's just a little surprised to hear you say girlfriend. Are you dating someone now? Yes, Rachel. You met her. Remember <laughs> you came home the other night when we were hanging out watching a movie? No, we've never met anyone named Rachel, honey. But I can't wait to. 
Then I, I go back in my room, I grab the photos, and I throw them on the table. Like, look, these are pictures that we took together. The two of us were in these pictures together. She was in this photo by herself, and now there's nothing there. All right, son, so you like taking pictures of empty street corners or something. I don't... Okay, this is going to sound... No, you're not going to art school. You know that, right? We've talked about this. This is not about art. This is about... No one knows that this girl exists anymore. This is someone that I've seen and hung out with. I've dated. I, my, she's friends with other people I know. And now I'm talking to you. You don't know who she is. I'm looking at these pictures. They don't... They're not... She's not there anymore. I'm calling the police. They have no idea. They're saying the Jewel family does not even have a daughter. I mean... I don't know the Jewel family, son. I've heard of them. But I don't remember them... Having a daughter. I, I, you know, look, I, I I don't know what's going on with you at school. You know, just just keep up the good grades and everything's I'm cool, I'm talking okay? about a missing girl. I figured that you two would understand ever since. Look, honey, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You seem to be all mixed up about somebody. Okay. But bring her home when you find her. No, honey, this is not the time. He's obviously... No, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Okay? I get it. After this happening to you guys before, you don't want to go through this again. Even though this is real. This is actually happening. Okay? I'm sorry. Whatever. And then I just... I walk out the door. Marcus Bennett exits the parental unit's household. Where would Marcus Bennett like to go? I gotta find this... I gotta find Billy. Um, would I? Would I know he does the paper route? Would you know that Billy Baker does the paper route? I'm sure that is something that would require a brains roll difficulty of four. Okay. As Marcus Bennett ponders over whether or not he can remember what Billy Baker might be up to, or why Billy Baker could even be important. Ten. He remembers Rachel mentioning that the coma boy does in fact have a paper route as he rides his skateboard around town. It's the only thing they could trust the coma boy to do. All right, I remember he has the paper route. I'm just gonna go around his route, see if I can find him. Apparently he called earlier, so maybe he knows something. Marcus Bennett grabs his bicycle. Marcus Bennett would like to now describe what his bicycle looks like. So it's a, it's a 10 speed. It's got a, it's a red and it's got a, 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 a little flame mark on this little lightning bolt on the side, you know, like the, that sort of thing. Uh, and then it, um, it has a, uh, a front little like pouch holder with the super friends on it. Cause he's super, he likes superheroes and, uh, and on the little, on the little side of it. In, in the pouch is a um, is a little uh, is a little 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 daisy, and that's something that uh, that uh, Rachel had put in there like a few days ago. This is like a thing to be before before she disappeared for the week. Marcus Bennett would like to roll his brains for a difficulty of twelve to see if he can put this one past me, the driver. Uh, nine. Marcus Bennett has two tokens available. I'm good. Yes, you're good. The daisy is not there. What is going on? Marcus, though 18, <sighs> hops on his bike, his parents refusing to do anything for him and expect him to do the work for himself as he starts to ride around town looking for the young Billy Baker. Young Billy, Billy. Cut to you? Mickey Jones, small apartment, two bedroom, your father still asleep on the couch. You can smell him from here before you awake. What happened last night, Mickey Jones? Your room, more destroyed than usual. The curtains that you had taped up over your window down 
the sunlight gleaming through. You're wet, but not water wet, as a sticky substance in a way covers you from head to toe, dripped through your clothes. What the hell was that? What is this? If I'm loud, my dad's gonna wake up and he'll kill me for sure. I'm gonna take a quick shower before I head out. As you exit the shower, your father begins to wake up. Is that, is that you? Uh, yeah, Dad, I'm just... Uh, Mickey? I'm just heading to school. You can go oh, back Mickey. to sleep. I'm sorry, Mickey. I got real... Real fucked up last night. Dad, it's... I didn't yell at you, did I? No, not this time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Mickey, you, you hand me some milk out of the fridge before you go? Yeah, yeah. And how about some water? And then just sleep? Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm calling in today. I'm not, I'm not going in today. Okay, thanks, Mickey. Uh, just, uh... just get some rest, Dad. Okay. I'll see you later. Mickey's father's eyes close again. It appears he's wearing the same clothes that he has been for the last two days. As you exit the assisted living complex, assisted income living complex, and make your way downstairs, you see there's an individual standing at the front desk talking to the police. Um, excuse me, did something happen? Was there a break-in or something? No, we had some kid come through here, prank calling the police. I guess he ran off. Told, we told him to wait right here, and his parents were on the way, but kid ran off. What kid was it? Uh, you didn't see uh, Billy Baker? I don't know Billy very well. Said something about... Some girl jumping off a bridge. What girl? Sorry? What girl did well, he say? That's the problem. And what girl? Well, did he mention a name at all? I'm not at liberty to tell you that, miss, unless you have information that could help in this situation. I mean, would it... A wild guess, would it have been Rachel? The police officer makes eyes at the old man standing next to the desk. Uh... What did you say your name was? I'm Mickey. Mickey Jones? Jones is girl. That's right. How's your dad doing, by the way? Is he upright? Uh, he's fine. It's fine. Um, giving us any trouble lately? Do you know anything about Rachel? Well, that's a question I'm going to ask you, miss. See, this Billy Baker mentioned something about a Rachel Jewel. Yeah, uh, Rachel the Jewel. The Jewel family does not have a daughter, Miss Jones, and I find it quite rude that the police officer grabs Mickey Jones' arm and pulls you, Mickey, to the side. Look, the uh, Jewel family, I know it's been a long time, it's been a while, but they're not really in a position for people to be putting this kind of hurt on them. Since... I don't know what you're talking about. Rachel, she works at the movie theater with me. She goes to school. She clocked in last night. She must have clocked out. She closed up. You can check the books. The books? Yes. Of the movie theater? Yes, we clocked Where in. Where a girl that doesn't out. exist works. She exists. I saw her last night. All right, Miss Jones. Why don't you hop in the cruiser? We'll, we'll head over there together. We'll clear this all right up. Okay? Okay. Okay. The police officer leads Mickey Jones by the arm out the front of the apartment complex and into the old police cruiser. The back seat, mind you. As the door closes and you look up towards your apartment complex, you do see your father looking down at you, confused. As the car drives away, Billy Baker is currently where? I'm riding my, <clears throat> I'm riding my skateboard back to my house. Okay, you arrive at your house, Billy Baker. I think it's been long enough. As you enter your house, you realize that your parents are no longer home. Mom, Dad! And that your little brother and sister seem to be gone as well. 
There's uh. a note on the kitchen table. What's it say? Billy, you're in some deep shit if you get back here before we do. Your papers were all over the road. You're calling the police. Not cool. What the crap? Uh, mm, uh, I'm gonna go ride my skateboard around. As you get ready to exit the house, you notice your camera bag sitting there. I'm gonna pick it up and take it with me. Would you like to look in the yeah, bag? Yeah, let me look inside actually. Uh, because I remember I put her journal in there. I'm gonna look for a journal. Okay. Let's see if you actually did with a difficulty check of five on brains. Ah, that's a six. Eleven. As you open the bag, a pristine pale blue diary remains. Okay, I'm not crazy. Everyone else is crazy. Everyone else was in a coma. Let's go. Put the backpack on my back and head out. Okay. Billy Baker, where would you like to head? I'm just riding my skateboard around aimlessly, wanting to talk to whoever I run into. I would like you to roll your grit with a difficulty of 10, please. Eight. Billy, you have four tokens. I'll use two. Instead of sobbing, as Billy Baker rides his skateboard around town, a single tear draws down his face. Sky Hawkins has now made it to the bridge where Billy Baker claimed Rachel jumped in. I get out of my Jeep <clears throat> and start looking around for any sign of Rachel or there was a robe. I think there was a robe uh, that Billy mentioned. If she jumped in, maybe I can see if she's here. Rachel? Rachel! Before we determine whether or not Sky Hawkins finds anything on this bri the bridge, I would like her to roll a difficulty check on brains of six. Four? That is a four. Sky Hawkins, you currently have four tokens. I'll use two. You see no robe. But as you walk, pacing up and down the bridge, you do see very interestingly placed, pointing out towards the water, two tall gold platform heels. Oh God, Rachel, I wanna run over to the heels and see if there's feet attached to them. <laughs> Since you asked, Please roll a grit. Difficulty of 10. Six. You have two tokens, Sky Hawkins. Not nearly enough to succeed this roll, but maybe enough to buffer what could possibly be a horrifying situation. Your call. I'll use them. The heels. Are not covered in blood. But you see what almost seems like a skin, like a snake that's shed of the bottom layers of someone's feet. Pressed deep, impacted into the soles of these heels. Are these heels in the water? No, no, they are on the bridge, pointed overlooking the water. Gross. Would I have known if Rachel would have owned some heels that look like this? Sky Hawkins searches her brain for some sort of resemblance of any mention of these heels in the last couple weeks from Rachel, because this is definitely not something she's ever seen Rachel wear 
but I will allow Sky Hawkins to roll a brains for a difficulty of 18. Five. Sky Hawkins has no memory of these heels ever being mentioned by Rachel. This couldn't be Rachel's. It's not even her style. It's disgusting, whatever this dead skin is. Oh, God. Sky Hawkins picks up the shoes and gets back into her Jeep. Marcus Bennett has made his way towards the high school, riding around looking for Billy Baker, following what he believes to be a very typical route. On that ride, you notice a man standing in the woods, this individual wearing a long black raincoat with a black backpack on, appears to be watching you from around a tree as you trail your bike around the curve, working towards Deer Junction and Taco Bell Express. Excuse me? Hey. Marcus Bennett pulls his bike to a stop. As he calls out for the individual in the woods, the individual slowly leans back behind the tree and out of your view. Hey, excuse me. So I'm gonna run over to the tree. To Marcus Bennett's surprise as he runs over to the tree, though seeing no one move from the left or to the right, there is no individual at the tree. Marcus Bennett then notices a bus moving by, passing closely to his bicycle on the side of the road. This surprises Marcus Bennett because the school shouldn't start for another hour. As Marcus Bennett looks down and checks his watch, 7.30. This is a little early today. An hour has passed since he left his house. Strange. Wait, what? What is going on? Mickey Jones arrives to the front of Kolok Cinema. Mickey, though only working at the cinema for a couple months, has been entrusted with a key. As Mickey unlocks the front door, the police officer seems unamused by this game. He's becoming quite restless. You know, if you would just give up the gag. There is no gag. How many people have talked okay. about Rachel going right. missing now? No, that's uh, two, technically, but you know, let's. <laughs> It's not the first time you kids have tried to pull a prank on us, so let's... Wh wh where are we going to find proof in here of this young Rachel? We clock in in the books on the okay. back. Okay. All right. Well, let's do that then, okay? Okay. She worked last night, the night shift. Okay, Mickey. You... You... You got it. The condescending tone of the police officer is not lost on Mickey Jones, as Mickey leads him to the back, where the clock-in gun is currently resting. You, Mickey, look around the area for some sort of resemblance of Rachel. Time sheets, her bag that she sometimes leaves behind the desk. Anything, really. But you find nothing. So, uh, proof? She doesn't usually leave anything here, but I'm sure that she clocked in for the night shift last night. I was supposed to cover for her, but she showed up anyway. Okay. So, this girl that exists, definitely exists, worked here last night. No record of her working here and let you go home from work. But your, your card here says you clocked out. Yeah, I left to leave her to lock up. But maybe she just forgot. Look, I know it doesn't sound... I know how it sounds. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask politely, Miss Jones, because your father and I go way back. Mm -hmm. Stop this. Uh, before you you get in trouble, okay? What this kind ends of with me. We'll say this ends with me. Yeah, all right. You're not going to help anyway. I'm not going to help because this is bullshit, miss, and I'm getting real tired of it. Then go back 
to your police station, go shove donuts in your mouth. You don't do anything around here anyway. Excuse me, miss? You heard me. How about we take a ride back down to the station together? I'm late for school, though. Why don't I just walk? The long walk, miss. I'm fine. Mickey Jones would like to roll her charm, difficulty of eight. I don't have a lot of that. <laughs> three. three. That is a three. Mickey Jones currently has five tokens. I'll use all five. Well. Surprised by your gumption, the police officer steps back. We're just going to end it here, okay? Yeah. I won't tell your dad about this. And you stop bringing up whatever this nonsense is. Yeah, all right. I'll see you the next time we have a problem. He exits the theater, gets in his cruiser, and drives away. Just as you see a 1988 red Jeep Wrangler pulling up into the theater parking lot, you see a Sky Hawkins. Not someone you've necessarily talked to before, but someone that you definitely recognize as Rachel, whoever that may be, his best friend. And you can see that she seems to be looking. Uh, hey Mickey. Hey, you're Sky, right? Yeah. Uh, did you see, did you see Rachel last night? She was supposed to work, she was supposed to lock up, but I haven't seen her since. Have you heard from her? Mickey, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think something really bad happened to Rachel. What makes you think something bad happened? I'm going to sound crazy, but I'm not the only one because Billy Baker said the same thing. I saw Rachel last night. You saw her? I, I It was like, it wasn't her, but it was her. And she was like emitting this crazy light. And it, I woke up and I had all this crazy stuff. That happened to me too. I saw her last night, and then I woke up covered in this goo. goo. Something crazy is happening because everyone I've talked to doesn't remember who Rachel is. I went over to her house, and her dad didn't even know what I was talking about. My parents don't know, and Rachel's my best friend. They know her more than any of my other friends. They, they know she exists, but my dad, who, who is so close to me, he, he thought I was crazy. I don't know who else we can talk to. I've already talked to the cops and they think that I'm crazy. They don't like me anyway. They're all biased. Yeah, it's, Billy did the same thing. It's, they're not gonna help us. Everyone just thinks we're nuts. Billy mentioned that he saw her not in a dream or whatever it is that we saw. It wasn't the same experience. He saw her on a bridge in a robe and in these gold heels, which I found, uh, but they're disgusting looking. I. I don't know what to do. I feel like we have to keep going about our day as if everything is fine. Even though, even though that's not how I feel. Rachel is gone and no one cares. We have to find her. We have to find proof that she existed. How are we gonna convince everyone that she is real? Feels like I'm in a different universe. And you, me, and Billy are the only ones that remember a world with Rachel in it. What about her boyfriend? He's an idiot. But maybe he knows something. Maybe he has something of hers. Oh, you're right. Something that we could connect Rachel existing to. You're right. Wow. This is the only time he's ever going to be useful. All right, do you want to get in my Jeep? We can go get him. Yeah, I'll hop in. He's probably at school. He's a super big nerd. All right, let, let's go let's to go. school and get him. Sky and Mickey hop into the 1988 Red Jeep Wrangler and head towards the northwest side of town towards Colock High. Where, interestingly enough, that is where we now find Billy Baker. As your skateboard, Billy, slides into the school parking lot, almost if by instinct, you headed that direction. Uh, I want to hop off my skateboard and go to, like, a wall of the school and kind of hunker down and pull the journal out of my bag and make sure it's still there. As Billy Baker hunkers down on the ground next to the school, he slowly opens his backpack. As he does, 
a strange light starts to emit. A gleaming blue aura starts to reveal itself, lighting the bottom of your face. You reach through the bag. You feel a hand slowly grasp yours, soft to touch, that of a young female. You quickly pull away. I need you to roll your grit for me, young Billy Baker, with a difficulty of seven. Five. Billy, you currently have two tokens. I'm going to save him. Billy Baker wets himself as the fear overcomes him. The intense feeling that Billy feels right now is more than he can handle as he feels a warmth pass down the side of his left leg. And your hand pulls out of the bag with a blue diary. Oh, shit. Uh, I want to pull out my Polaroid and take a photo of the diary. You can do so. Sick. Should probably know how to work the camera you own, Billy Baker. <laughs> I understand Just it was being minute. used by someone else for a while. As Billy Baker tries to remember how to operate his camera, Marcus Bennett spots him. Yeah. Kneel like down it. next to the school with a blue book in his hand, a camera, and what appears to be a wet stain on the front of his pants. Hey, Coma boy. Hey, uh, I'm drinking like I'm drinking a Yoo-Hoo, but like I'm drinking it like it's alcohol because I'm just so I I don't, I don't drink it very often. I I I uh, the water fountain was leaking. Um, hey, have you? It's a pretty yellow water fountain. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I peed my pants, okay? Have you seen Rachel? That's what I'm looking for. So you know her? Yeah. What you got there, Billy? I think it's... I think it's her diary. Don't freak out. She borrowed my camera, and then she gave it back to me, and this was with it. So let me get something straight, and I'm, like, getting closer and closer. Rachel's missing. No one seems to know who she is. You know who she is, and you got her diary. Yeah. I smashed the Yoo-Hoo glass. You want to tell me what's going on here, cool it's, boy? It's, I, I'm so glad that you know as well, because everyone I'm talking to pretends that she doesn't exist. Why are they pretending? Is everyone in on her kidnapping? I was on my paper route, and she was standing on the bridge over the river, and she was wearing a robe, and she, and she was wearing, like, heels and stuff, and she was smoking marijuana, and then she, she got, like, taken by some stuff. Like, this light showed up, and she got, like, she got, like, pulled inside. That's the exact same thing I saw. What kind of prank are you pulling? Is I'm not some, pulling any prank. Are you working with, like, the AV club? Is this, like, some special effects thing you did? Sky Hawkins, she, she believes me, and she remembers Rachel, too. Sky Hawkins talked to you? I ran to, I ran, I ran to Rachel's house, and Sky was there. Because, th I guess they're neighbors. Heard only by Marcus Bennett, a small, strange voice just from around the corner. Hey, why are you picking on the little guy? What? Why are you being such a big douchebag, buddy? Mallory, is that you? Marcus, you turn and look around the side of this small corner and everything appears to be normal. No individual standing there other than that of a small squirrel. Yeah, me. What the fuck are you looking at? What the hell? Hey, don't be picking on the little kid. Coma Boy's been through a lot. I don't hear this. All right. Okay, Marcus? what are you doing? What, what are you doing? What? I helped you out yesterday. Why are you making fun of me? Why are you pulling these pranks? What is, what is this whole setup that you got going on? Is this some like crazy like last witch type thing that you want to do? Whoa, whoa, chill, bro. Okay, stop chill, this. Man. Stop this. Listen. Marcus, I just peed my own pants because I thought there was a hand touching me from my backpack. The small squirrel moves its way up towards Marcus's foot as it's now resting its two front paws on the bottom of your shoe. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm missing some nuts. You see my nuts anywhere? This is not cool, bro. 
It's not cool. Do I see the squirrel? Billy Baker notices a small squirrel on the shoe of Marcus Bennett. I, I, I can't control squirrels. I don't know what you think I can do. That combo boy can't control no damn squirrels. Okay, you know But what? it looks like you got yourself a little friend there. I just like to shoo it away. Just... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Get out of here! Hey, whoa, whoa, chill, man. No need to be like that. I don't know what's going on. You're wanting to find Rachel, right? I got a whole network, buddy. Word's gotten round. Girl goes missing. People start asking questions. You looking for info? At this point, Marcus Bennett has now turned and is facing this small squirrel, not really speaking, but looking intently, moving down closer and closer to it, much to Billy Baker's surprise. Marcus, what, what are you going to do to that squirrel? Don't worry about coma boy. Let's just have a conversation, me and you. I grab the squirrel. Whoa, 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 what whoa, are you whoa, talking whoa, about? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you know? Marcus Bennett needs to roll a fight. Difficulty of six. Okay. Uh, four? Is that? I, I got the skull. I take a picture of him holding the squirrel. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. As Marcus Bennett squeezes this small squirrel, the squirrel bites him ah! on his hand as blood immediately starts to pour out between your thumb and your index oh, finger. Stupid. As stupid. the squirrel runs around the corner and away. I have a. Uh, this ain't the last you heard of me, fuckface. Squirrels. Uh, do I have a, a Billy a Baker happen to catch all of this on camera as the Polaroid develops, revealing the squirrel biting you as you shriek in horror? Uh, Give me that picture. It it hasn't developed yet. Give me the picture. I just have to shake it. Really no, hard. you don't. We're gonna give it to me now to rip it apart. Fine. At this I actually point, use it to actually use it to like. You would like to rip it? No, I would like to use it to uh, put on my 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 blood finger the polaroid i need to put something on it unless i got a first aid kit in my backpack I can marcus backpack. bennett uses the polaroid to try to soak up the blood as if it was somehow a smart thing to do <laughs> and doing so sky <laughs> hawkins and mickey jones have now exited the 1988 red jeep wrangler and have made their way towards the front of the school where they see young billy baker with wet pants holding a blue book and a marcus bennett holding a apparently sore hand. Would Sky know that that diary is uh, Rachel's? No. Oh, I just assumed that I did know. No, but Billy said so. That's true, he did. Sky. What, Marcus? I'm gonna ask you a question. I know it's gonna sound incredibly stupid, but yeah. You're used to those kind of questions. Look, this you. is serious, okay? Your best friend. Name her. Go. Rachel. Yeah, okay, so you know her too. Yeah. So you know her? Yeah, of course. She's my girlfriend. But no one else seems to know. So Wait, you know her too? Yeah, I work what, with her. What's your name again? Mickey. Oh, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet so you. So only the four of us know. Oh, Billy. I went to the bridge. I found those heels you were talking about. The gold heels? They were still there. But there's like this weird dead skin in them. Uh, that's all that I could find. Well, I'll tell I, you what. I came here to try and figure out if you guys have found anything else out about Rachel's disappearance. Well, it looks like our friend here has her has a book I from think, her. I think this might be her journal. What are you doing with Rachel's journal? That's what I was asking until the squirrel showed up. He was squirrel? squeezing a squirrel. Billy. Anyway, I let her borrow my camera. And then she returned it in a bag, and I found this inside the bag. And I think it's hers. I can kind of see, like, some little writing in there. And it looks like her handwriting, but it's locked. Can I see it? It has a combination lock. Maybe you guys would know. What are some numbers that are important to Rachel? Okay, this is going to sound really weird. But when I saw her and talked to her yesterday, before she talked, she, like, blurted out a number. What number was it? Was it zero or was it one? 
It was. It was one, I believe. Okay. She did the same thing when we talked. I thought she was just calling me a zero. It wouldn't be the first time that I heard that. This happened to me too. What? Thought she was just being crazy. She said the number nine. You don't think that. She says a lot of numbers to me because we do. Yeah, she. I'm she probably not. She's saying the with... like specific number to you. There's only three numbers here. Maybe it's maybe it's nine. One. Zero. I don't have. That was it. That unlocked her journal. What? Are there any? Are there any signs? Of. Whoa. Of her. There's a Polaroid in here. What's what on it? it? That's a picture of Marcus. Gross. And it's her car. It's no. The car in question that you pull out, Sky Hawkins, of Rachel's diary, is recognized immediately by young Mickey Jones. It's her father's car. Wait, that's my dad's car. A 1977 Cutlass Supreme. Why would Rachel have a picture of your dad's car in her journal? I have no idea. I mean, the picture of Marcus makes sense. But why? We were talking at the theater and she got really interested in my dad, but I just thought it was because, well, you know, her dad. They're just drunks. And she started asking questions, which I, I just thought she was being nice. Wait. Okay, I, I'm just looking through this. Her uh, first journal entry is uh, January 5th, 1986. Let me see if there's... Well, there's some more photos in here. What of them? What is it? Some of these, like... Crazy heels. And then... Gold heels, like the ones you hold, Sky Hawkins. Those are the same heels that were at the bridge. What? I... I don't, I don't know what this... Why would she take a picture of him? What is this picture? It's like a, of an alleyway or something. Do I recognize this, uh, location? There's... Billy Baker searches his mind for any resemblance of understanding this location. Given that Billy spends a lot of time in the side streets of the town, I will give that a brains difficulty check of four. Is that three? Billy Baker has two tokens. I'll use one. Don't want to piss Billy Baker, this. recognize this street in between Main Street, directly next to the law offices of her father, Rachel's father, or at least the father that she used to have. That's. That's right where Mr. Jewel's office is. It's right there on, on like, on the street. Mr. Jewel's office. This, it, there's a page ripped out where these photos were. The dreams are getting worse and worse. I can see reflections of people with mohawks. Uh, uh, I next... saw people with mohawks. And they had zippers on their mouths. But they were still able to talk. The next page says, well, I'm a goner. If my time on this planet is coming to an end, I'm gonna lose my virginity to someone who actually gives a shit about me. Um, I'm sorry for getting you all involved. Be careful, stay safe. And then the last page is ripped out and that's it. She, that's the last thing that's in her journal. She gave us numbers and she wanted us to open this. This was for us. She wants us to... A voice was... that surprises all four of you. Uh, hey, uh, Sammy stands at the head of your group. What the hell uh, do you want, Sammy? Um, I saw Rachel last night. You know Rachel too. She's dead, isn't she? What did you see? Sammy, what did you see? Yeah. I saw her body taken. <laughs> I don't know why. I, what's going on? I'm 
fucking scared. Sammy. I'm fucking you, scared. You talked to her yesterday. What What did she say to you? Like She didn't say anything. She just handed me this. What is it? I don't know. It's like a little... It's a piece of her journal. piece of paper. Give it here. Give it here. What the fuck's going on? I, oh, I woke up this morning. I was like covered in some weird shit. And... It smelled gross and sticky and stuff, and my room was... was all... Hey, man. Get a hold of yourself. We all went through the same thing. It's fine. Yeah, we went through it, too. We're past that. We got bigger fish to fry. I would like Sky Hawkins, Billy Baker, and Mickey Jones to each roll a brains for me. Difficulty of four. <laughs> One. Two. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got a two. Sky Hawkins. You have three tokens available. I'll, I'll use them. And because all of you are together in this situation, you can help each other. Billy Baker, you have one token. Marcus, I did not ask you to roll, but you can participate in assisting in this situation with your four tokens. Mickey, you also have one. Marcus, would you like to assist the uh, individuals, the passengers of this car that is currently careening off the side of a cliff? Uh, and the... And the what was it again? Four? Difficulty of four. Okay. You would be able to cover that all right. Four. I'm going to give three of my tokens to Billy. Billy has one token. Give Mickey me two. has oh, give one me two. token. I'll take okay, one. I'll give two to Billy and one to Mickey. And I'll use my one. And my one. Each of you realize now, in the clothes that you're currently wearing, you feel a small, strange indent in your pocket as you reach in you pull out a piece of paper what is that? this is a page from her journal wait i have a piece too guys i think this is the this is the page that was ripped out maybe they'll match up i don't like what was on my page oh these this don't is... guys maybe they me... match with yours Yo, what the fuck's going on? I'm, I'm really freaked out. Is Rachel dead? Like, wait, wait, wait. I talked to my dad this morning. He said, he Sammy. was like, Rachel, Sammy. who? Who the fuck's Rachel? Sammy, shut, Sammy, up. shut up. up, Sammy. What is that? It's some thing called the Gorgon. What the hell is? What the my fuck's dad, a Gorgon? I don't know, but it's some drawing. Here, you guys gotta take a look at this. Gorgon? Isn't that a type of bean? I don't think that's this kind. Do you think... Do you think Rachel... Do you think she drew that? That's, that looks like it matches up with the page that's ripped out of her journal. Why would she give us these clues? She must, she must still be alive, and she needs our help. Or to this find is her. the thing that killed her. We, we don't know if she's gone. Does this Mickey? look anything like anything I saw on the bridge? Billy Baker searches his brain for any remembrance of this image, this shape, this face, and though he tries, can remember nothing. Maybe it's the coma. Listen, I don't want to talk about Rachel as if she's dead. We all know that she's alive. She's she alive. left us this note. She needs help. It, I can feel her, as crazy as that sounds, and I know she's alive. Sky Hawkins, while turning the pages of the diary, sees that there's another small picture taped to one of the written pages. I found another photo. What is it? It's a picture of the town, it says the debt will be collected on March 5th. March 5th? It's saying... Today's... Today's date is March 5th, 1991. She was the debt? What kind of debt would be a person? It's a 
make any sense, but... <sighs> Would I... have ever heard of a Gorgon before? Marcus Bennett would like to roll his brains for a difficulty of eight. Ten. Marcus Bennett recognizes that in Greek mythology class, he learned that a gorgon is a mythical creature betrayed in ancient Greek literature. Descriptions of the gorgon vary across Greek literature and occur in the earliest examples of Greek literature as some form of kind of a Medusa figure. Guys? I, I found this kind of disturbing page from from Rachel's journal. It says, tonight when I was walking uh, around with that girl from work, Mickey, her dad, was like following me or something. He pulled up next to me and handed me a pair of gold platform heels. It seriously creeped me out. He said that they should fit me and that he would be seeing me soon. I asked Mickey today what her dad does. She said he works security for Synchrid... Synchronity. Sky Hawkins would know that Synchronity is the local research firm that runs most of Coloc. Synchronity. Why is he following me? He's still following me. Ew, why would he give her heels? I can't remember what happened. I remember getting in the elevator and then standing outside with this photo in my pocket. The one about... The one that, uh, of the town says the debt will be collected on March 5th. Ugh. Look, I don't know what this has to do with my dad, but this doesn't sound like him. Says the fa the sheriff just left. He had photos of me going to the elevator and leaving. 30 minutes later, I lied to my parents. Said I was high. He demanded I tell him where I got the weed. I said I got it from a girl I worked with. This is crazy. Well. Mickey, where was your dad last night? He probably drunk somewhere. He doesn't just go pull up to girls on the side of the road. He's done some bad things, but that's not my dad. Why would Rachel lie, Mickey? I'm not trying to accuse your dad of anything. Or you, but I don't really know you. And I know Rachel. And I trust whatever she says over anything that you would say. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sammy, shut up! No one's even talking to you. Close your mouth. What? You want to ask my dad? Let's go ask my dad. That'd be great. Good Mickey. luck waking him up. All right. Let's go. Let's get in my Jeep. Let's go. Yeah. Are we going to skip school? As Skyhawk and turns to leave, um, be known to the group probably because you were so enthralled in conversation, a man carrying a briefcase, a tall man. You've all seen this man wandering around town. Everyone just assumed he was some sort of businessman. He's got a tailored suit and a long tie. <coughs> sometimes you see this man walking, sometimes riding the bus, but always on his way somewhere. Just never really knowing where his destination may be. As you stop, Sky Hawkins, as this man stands directly in front of you, you look down, and at your stomach you see that his hand has reached out and a small piece of paper. Uh. As you grab it and pull it up to your face, Sky Hawkins, the paper reveals you have been summoned. And within that instant, before any have a chance to react, a hole opens up in the earth underneath Sky Hawkins. The hell? As she falls into this hole and her body goes sliding down into the ground with the hole immediately closing shut. Sky? No! What the heck? What just happened? And that is where we are going to end tonight's episode of Kolok 1991. What? Am I going to go visit Satan? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Just when I thought we were going to be best friends. <laughs> thank you all so much. I can be uh, normal now. Uh, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, this whole thing is an experiment. Do you want to put that diary up on page? I want. Uh, yeah, I'll flip through it and show them. Yeah, they might be able to see some things in there. Use the other one? Oh, okay. the other camera? Okay. Uh, Hopefully everybody's enjoying the show. Um, this whole thing is an absolute experiment in live play. Uh, the players had no idea about any of the stuff that was going to go on tonight. 
Um, so they are as fresh to this mystery as you are. This happens live. The mystery will get more intense as it goes, and we will incorporate the chat room suggestions and influence as it happens. Now, I do remember what rumor was hit, and that rumor will appear very soon. So please do keep tuning into the show if you want to see how that rumor resolves. Each, uh, each week, basically, um, we will be doing this now. Every Monday night at 6 p.m., lots of mysteries for these players to try to figure out. And if you enjoyed this, please do go join our Discord, discord.gg slash hyperrpg, where you can actually roleplay as a member of the town of Kolok. How cool. There are rules in the Discord as well. Make sure to follow them. I will be bringing people from that world directly into the game. Whoa. And uh, did we hit our goal? What's that? I, 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 um, I'm trying to figure out whether or not if we hit our goal. That's the information I need. So uh, if someone could let me know if we hit our goal, um, because if we did, oh, we did. Thank you, Gaika. So uh, we hit our goal, which means that we will directly be pulling someone's NPC out of the Discord into the show, and they will be on the show next week. How cool. Uh, so I'll reach oh, out to someone in the Discord, and you will get a message from me, and we'll work together to bring your NPC that you created in the Discord into the show. Uh, we want to make sure that there's ways that those who want to participate financially um, can and those who cannot also get to have fun and hang out and be a part of the show as it happens through polls and the discord and things like that as well you do have to be a subscriber to uh use that discord because we got to pay for this content somehow uh, <laughs> uh our channel is basically a live kickstarter the audience funds everything that you see so thank you all so so much uh yeah. these shows survive by your support and word of mouth so if you enjoyed please do tell a friend the mystery is just beginning and i would like to apologize to the players and the viewers for all the exposition in the first half of the episode there was a lot to set up to get the mystery started um usually that's not how this will go usually it'll be more like the second half where i sit back and let the players discover the mystery at their own pace and where they would like to be oh marcus is getting into that getting into that <laughs> diary now. good stuff in Let's, here. you know what go ahead and hold that close that up oh, we don't want to reveal everything we don't oh, reveal everything gosh. it's too much it's too much uh Huge shout out to my players tonight. Thank you guys so much. Uh, all I was able to tell them all week was really, this is going to be weird. I hope you're okay with it. You made me watch a weird movie. I, <laughs> I okay. Bad dreams. For clarity, I made you watch Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. It's not that weird. Dude, that was weird, man. I could send you way weirder. Let's get no, into man, it. My let's neighbors get dark. already freaked out. It was like, turned up way too loud. Oh, let's get dark. Um, you know. Uh, seriously, this is so much fun to play at the table with you all. Uh, you all are really great. And I can't wait to do this every week. Yeah, and, and this is, you know what, yeah, just a shout out to you because you create uh, content unlike any I've ever seen on the internet. Awesome, These thank you for role -playing, that. role playing uh, series that you put all this time and effort into. I don't yeah. think anyone knows all of the hours of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears that go into it. So thanks for creating I these I really appreciate beyond, that. For I now, love it. For I, us, for I can't. Uh, yeah take credit for that completely without saying thank you to Malika uh, who helped me I obviously did that's not my handwriting in that diary Malika, <laughs> Malika nice. spent half a day with me uh, filling out that diary uh, to help build out this town huge shout out to Alex Need who did all the music for the show which so is good. fucking oh, unreal so amazing. it's so good and each week you're going to hear more of that and Let's we'll keep diving into that getting deeper and deeper into this world uh, huge shout out to Monica Magana thank you so much Monica I am definitely going to fix the intro i just got so overwhelmed i still have some stuff to fix on that but you could definitely check out monica's artwork she did all the wonderful character pips that you saw on screen uh, monica's the best she'll be doing some more art for the show as it goes i see this as a collaboration between myself the players alex and monica we're all going to work together to build as vivid of a world as possible and also with your help i take so much of the chat room suggestions and weave them into the story you are always heard and you will always be a part of the shows we do here at hyper so thank you guys so much coming up tomorrow is the season finale of blood curdling tales from the uh, of tales from the loop using the tales from the loop system and then on wednesday we have rat queens our very very holy shit fun show uh, that is run by some of the most amazing women i know and it is a great fun show if you like punk rock and you like D D and you like women kicking ass that show mm -hmm. is amazing. And then this Thursday, we have the premiere of our Warhammer show. So we've got a crazy lot of work to do. Wow. Lucas is main producer on that one. So nice. yep. we got to get to fucking where. No sleep till Thursday. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now, one of the things we like to do on this network as we are closing out a show is give a huge shout out to all the individuals who helped fund the show as it was happening. So I'm going to pull up <coughs> our comms page here, and we're going to just give a real quick thank you sign of support for everyone who helped uh, with the show today. 
favorite part of today's show? When Billy peed his pants. That's <laughs> <pretty funny. laughs> that will so probably cool. happen a lot. Oh, good, good. Yeah. I want to I wanna make it really clear, too. This system, even though it's kind of it's really fun and there's a lot of cool stuff in it, the way difficulty and failure works can be pretty brutal. So if you get like uh, the, I probably should have told you this before you got on the show. Uh, your characters can die. Yeah, I know. I, know. I found that can. out at the very beginning. You got so close. So can. close. So right. I know we're putting a lot of work into this. I know that we are diving deep into these characters, but they can be forever lost. Except so. me, right? Except my character. Nope. That's Little. not how that works. Except Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sweet. <laughs> so, let's go directly in. Thank you, PRFan2002, for saying, here's a token for Sky and Billy. Yeah. Thank you, Super Mega Ultra Hyperforce, for nice to meet you, Sky, Billy, Mickey, and Marcus. Nice. Eridence, so excited to see the start of Coloc. Really been moving forward, looking forward to this. Here's a token for Mickey to start things Woo! off as weirdos need to stick together. <laughs> Mr. Fantasy, Billy, here's some tokens for a great intro. Game of Joe B, something about that mechanic seems shifty. Hashtag rumor four. Yeah, they don't know about these rumor things. I'm excited uh... that they don't know. Um... The chat is basically getting to pick which rumors become true on the show. Wow. And you don't get to know what they are. Yikes. Um, it's like high school. <laughs> Winston, hello, your name may be Billy, but now we all still ha know we all still have your back, Lucas. Aww. Dame 90, adding what I have for an, a hashtag rumor one. Logan Pars, rumor two is very believable. The FDH, rumor four. Mr. Fantasy, rumor one, finishing off the rumor. Now, I want to make it really clear, because I didn't get to do this at the beginning of the show, because we want to get right into it. These rumors, when you're giving evidence towards them, add flavor to it. You need to describe how you're adding that evidence. If you're giving the full amount, say what it is. How do you see creatively? evidence adding to that rumor. What did you see in town that makes you believe this rumor is true? That's what I want to know. Tokyo drifts right into it. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Lucid, rumor two, because every weird show needs some weird situations involving cute animals. Oh, yeah. It's yes. not what you think. Oh. Reldal, <laughs> like this is totally weird. I totally swear I saw a guy in an oil stained jumpsuit hanging around near the high school parking lot last week. Game of Joe B. Oofta, that was rough first couple rolls. Hashtag Sky. Mel Pamino, <laughs> Sky is so gonna need these. <laughs> Synchronity, here's some help, Marcus. Jaina Grace, I feel like Billy would need a token soon. Eridence, based on that introduction, I get the feeling that Megan is going to need a lot of these, so here's a token for Sky. Thanks, we guys. want you to at least survive the first episode. <laughs> I can't believe I almost died. Oh, We're yeah. so proud of you. Yeah, I, you just got sucked to a hole instead. That was, yeah, actually, I don't even know if I'm alive. <laughs> you don't. Shadow Uzumaki, Mickey probably needs some tokens. Thank you. J Pistol, good luck, coma boy. Hashtag Billy. <laughs> Jaina Grace, oh, time boy. for a token for Marcus. Eridence, finishing off the Mickey yeah. token. WCH for hashtag rumor one, Valen36, hashtag Billy tokens. By the way, Amir, I forgot to tell you earlier today, the show ends with the video that's in the video stingers folder that's like for the ending. Cool, thanks, man. I forgot to go over that with you. That was my bad. Uh, let's see, J Pistol, NPC, the businessman. Everyone sees him around town, always in one of his tailored suits and a tie. Mm. Carrying oh. a briefcase, sometimes walking, sometimes riding the bus, always on his way somewhere, but never seems to reach its, desina its destination. Wow. Uh, Vic the Bitter for Marcus. Haywood for Mickey. Dan Bowski 11 toward a token for Marcus. Jay Pistol for Ooh, Marcus. Freaks. Mr. Fantasy Sky. More tokens. Eridence. Let's get to the goal for the show, Sky. J Pistol for Mickey. Thank you all Woo! so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, seriously, I can't wait to go on this journey with you all. Uh, everyone here has been working so hard on this and it, it's really great. Uh, Malika would like to, me to remind you that if you scroll down on the page and you install Retail Me Not, it's for free, so anyone who wants to support this show and the network, you can do so by scrolling down under the video player and clicking on our Retail Me Not link, and uh, that really helps HyperRPG out. It's a free thing to do to install a plugin on your browser, and it supports Hyper and all the shows that we make. Um, we are not owned by any large company. We're a group of friends trying to make really cool content, 
and push the envelope of Twitch. So we thank you all so much. If you enjoyed the show, also uh, let people know on Twitter with hashtag Colock1991. Uh, make sure to tweet at all of yeah, the Yeah, I'll be going through the hashtag and replying to people's tweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so much fun to see what people thought. So I, th- I think that's all I got. Oh, I'm going to sleep so long tonight. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try to sleep, but now, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to wake mm. up at 4 in the morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bed watching all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, watch <laughs> creepy movie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good time. I like it. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. And we'll be seeing each other again soon. Bye. Bye. You found yourself back at the start. <laughs>